in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You know what? It was an overthrow by Mitch. Yeah. I mean, injured bear on the field is Akeem Hicks. Cousins loses the football. Strip sack and take away. Bears are alive. Who else but Khalil Mack? Bears are alive. We go all live right after Bears games with your boys draft talks and the smartest men alive. Yo. Bears are alive. Bears are alive. We go all live right after Bears games with your boys draft talk and the smartest men alive. Bear up with the true analysis you expect. Raw passion for the show. Bear fans get nothing left. Locked in with real emotion and passion for every play. Go still gonna bring that rage, but in with fact my shame. Post game show like nothing else you're gonna hear. Some can try to copy, but a bucket's not sincere. Delivering the truth on what just happened to be clear. That's why we're on TV so you can see and not just hear. But don't you worry. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. We go on live right after Bears games with their boys trapped the talk and the smart the men alive. The Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. We go on live right after Bears games with their boys trapped talk and the smart men alive. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live. The Tape Never Lies Network. This is Bears Hour Live. Hey, hey, here we are, Bears fans. Bears dropped the game 21 to 9. Season over, and now the questions start. Uh, lack of effort all over the field. We saw it on offense, saw it on defense. Uh, it you know goes hand in hand with the inept coaching staff uh, talking about these off season questions that we're going to be handling all off season. But it first and foremost, this is a a, a big night uh, that's going to be taking place in Hallis Hall because they have to have to have to make the correct decisions there. I'm of the fact that it needs to be a clean slate start over yes there is talent here you're not getting the best and the most out of the guys that you're paying the most and and that says it all it says it about your leadership up top it says it about your it says it about your coaches but uh it is what it is we're used to this as bears fans as much as it hurts you know playoffs did, did, did the chicago bears look like they were in the playoffs to you guys they didn't to me did this coaching staff look prepared or did they look like they got out prepared, you know, across the field? That's what it is. But we have so many questions to be answered here on BHL tonight. We have so many questions about this team moving forward. And it's going to be really, really important to focus on what we're doing here because we're going to we're going to cover it better than anybody else moving forward. Uh, it's going to be hopefully a Black Monday here in Hallis Hall moving forward but until then we're going to turn it over and we're going to give it to the draft doctor so he can uh, get going on his opening rant <laughs> talk about pressure how do you get everything packed into a synopsis of what just transpired that's a lot of pressure to put on me without pads and a helmet because what i just saw there having all of you bears fanatical fans that understand the game of football wanting my thought to be put into perfect 
completely tangible understanding for the world of people that care. If you don't care, you're okay. Fucking, we were on Nickelodeon. Hey, that was fun. That's you. That's those people. That's those networks. That's everybody else trying to fucking pass the buck. The buck starts here. You want to know the truth? I got, I got five, 500 DMs from people fired up and have all the fucking answers and this, that, and the other. And I'm watching the fucking game with my sons and my best, one of my best friends. And all I see is what I've been showing you each and every week. And it, it, it goes with weak. When you're a weak character, the reflection of you transcends to the people you're supposed to be directing and leading. But he can't do it. He can't do it. He can't understand situational football. You heard Tony Romo say it there. And then they backpedal. Hey, you can't fire Nagy. I mean, how many years has he? Two out of three years in the playoff? That doesn't tell the fucking story. They backed into the playoffs against their rivals. They sucked. Got it? Get it, Chris? With a K? That's the reality. As a head coach, you're maniacal in situational football. Maniacal. You know your personnel. You know your talent. Javon wins in the big moment. He's punching people, right? In this big moment, it's dropping plays. The transcend send the whole game. The momentum gets lost because you can't make a play any fucking NFL player should make. It's no pressure. It's your job. Don't make an excuse. Drain your hands into the bucket. Mitch made a play. Those are the trick plays you run in big games. Down the field to score. Not gimmick reverse. That shit don't work. That's JV. But let's get into it. Let's talk real talk. Let's talk about missed tackle, loafing. Have you heard this shit before? Drops, third and 12, give them 14 on three missed tackle. We can't do it because you're not prepared. You're fucking tw one minute and 22 seconds to go in the game is the first question you asked your head coach. Why, coach? especially getting the ball because you deferred. Why aren't you being aggressive? Why aren't you being aggressive? You just ran inside zone twice and did nothing before the half. We want to go into the half 7-3. That's not what you signed up for. All these fucking media, all these little blog boys are going to write their story. It's not on Mitch. It's not on Nagy. It is! I don't give a shit. You want to talk about trading for Watson? Draft Watson. That's what you should have did. That's what you should have did. That's what I would have done. That's what Shane probably and me and him would be fighting. Fuck, Kaiser. It's Watson. And we'd be fighting. We'd get it right. That's what good teams do. They don't get it right. Mitch, they have no confidence in. No gambler. You got nothing to lose. You're 8-8. Eight and eight. And you play conservative. That's the head coach. That's that. That's why this network says clean house. Cut the head off the snake. All you're going to see is this over and over again. And oh, by the way, undisciplined, lacking fundamental football is a reflection of the head coach. Let me whisper it into your ear. I don't give a shit. Pagano, he's your assistant. It's you. That's your team throwing punches. It's disgusting and it's disgraceful. And that's why you are a losing, embarrassing organization. Because nobody would do that if you were a head coach demanding the best. Because when you demand it, you get it or you get out. You've said it over and over. And if you want to question who's calling the plays, it's the head coach. It's not even close. And that, Shane. It's my fired up rant with the pressure of the world on my shoulders. McCaskey, 
Get this fuck out. He's a shoe salesman. We've been saying it all year long. Have we not, Shane? Have we not? Yeah, Phil, we've had it covered here for for a long time. I mean, right, wrong, or indifferent, be a, you know, true there, a Mitch apologist, a Mitch supporter, uh, you know, believe in Nagy, not believe in Nagy. <laughs> These guys are who they are at this point. I mean, he, there's a groundswell out there of saying on Twitter right now of saying you got to get Nagy his quarterback. <laughs> Nagy handpicked his quarterback. Nobody's talking about that. Nick Foles is here because of Matt Nagy. What about that? Oh, he knows the system better than anybody. He's going to be the guy that Nag- Nagy's got his guy. No, no, no. Now we now we got to draft that guy. Yeah, draft. It needs to be it needs to be a clean slate, Phil. We we've said it here. It, it, that includes that includes Mitchell Trubisky, Trubisky gone. Bye. Ryan Pace, gone. Bye. Matt Nagy, gone. Bye. But it's not going to happen. Let's it's, not say that. It's I I hold right. I'm speaking my truth. I I okay. think I think Do that me Puck- a favor tonight on this show. Yeah. Don't say it's not going to happen. We know what we know. Let's just say what needs to fucking happen on our network. Because we're not blog boys. That answer right there. He's got a draft. He interviewed for the job fully knowing who the quarterback was. You don't take Colts job, Bears job, whatever other jobs were open at that time without making the decision, okay, that's a young guy I want to coach. That's that's the reality of the – don't try to rewrite history. He chose, interviewed, took this job fully knowing Mitch Trubisky was your quarterback. They went so far, go back and read the goddamn stories. Don't try to change this shit, blog boys. Oh, he's got to get his guy. He's got to get his guy. We, we could be waiting 20 more years for a quarterback to get his guy. The guy doesn't teach. He calls plays. He doesn't scheme guys open. Did you see the last play? How fucking ironic is that? Let me just say this. Jimmy Graham in the red zone. Oh, by the way, is a threat. And on the very last play with the clock hits zero should be the pink slip under or in Matt Nagy's fucking play sheet. They should just slide it in there, stick it to it. Because Jimmy Graham should be in the offensive scheme in the red zone, making that play for you. 7-3 and you're inside the 25-yard line. Let's get our big tight ends. In. No, no. Let's throw an out to fucking Anthony Miller who gets thrown out of the game. All, let's not skip over this shit. We got my father in the in the in the room. There he is. Hey, hey coach. How you doing? Shit? I'm glad you hey, didn't I... get to to hear my <laughs> my <laughs> rant. I sound like Eddie Murphy uh, right. raw and Eddie Murphy raw. Oh because it is a disgrace. You know something, Phil? I was gonna put this in the air tonight. I'm Put saying they the got a guy number college. number eighty he hadn't caught a pass all day, and he catches the touchdown pass. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't even use him until they the last I'm drive. Telling you, I'm telling you right now, the whole problem with this team now, as I look at it, my my opinion now is the offensive line. That's oh, absolutely. You got a great run, great running back. The defense finally got excited about playing. What a great game they played! I'm telling you, that team played hard. And it's just yes, unfortunate they- we got some dummies that go offside because there's two of their scores because of offside. Oh, my own. Let's you know, talk. Just- stop. Number 39. Let's Oof. get this out of the way. He's all pro. They Ryan Pace, the GM. And all show. The- He's all show now. <laughs> the GM signs him to this big deal. And this guy is the guy jumping off sides. He is the guy freelancing, whiffing on tackles, arm tackle, trying to strip the ball. He is a freaking wart in the worst place on your body. He is horrific. And we've been saying that all season long. And in the biggest game, you got to have your player. Manti Teo 
comes in off the practice squad, and he plays better on a defense he's not played with all year than the Pro Bowl hype bowl. Fucking put him in the Nickelodeon bowl. Get him off the field. Like, I don't understand. There's no accountability with this head coach. You're right. The defense was playing with heart. Claudio turned to me. He's like, Phil, you know, it's been three and a half quarters of the defense trying to keep them in there. The offense can't even move the football. And you're right. The offensive line, guard, oh, my God, bars and the center, as we broke it down on yesterday, breaking down those two, 64 and 67, had a horrific day. They're getting pushed into the backfield. You can't run the ball. Claudio, you can get on those you know, comments in the chat. Don't be afraid to put them up. I know a lot of – there's so many going on. I just don't want to leave them. But you're right. The defense played hard. I just – I just – I don't get the game plan whatsoever. There it's wasn't very, any. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. Just call plays. Just call plays. Well, I, I thought – Mitch probably had his best game. Really? Yeah. How did you see that? I'm I'm struggling seeing it. I this throw well, is a right on target. Deep, he throws the deep ball oh. that should have been caught. Yeah. That changed the whole momentum of the game. Yeah. yeah. The, Shane if Tech he caught that ball. I think New Orleans would have been in trouble. I really mean it. Well, yeah. Shane, I mean, they, the they co confidence. Confidence wise, Mitch was like after that play. His confidence in throwing the ball down the field started to waver. No, he had nothing to lose. I don't think that can happen. I think he threw the ball with, I mean, some accuracy that I hadn't seen before. He, he threw the ball pretty well, I thought. Well, Listen, I, you got to remember one thing. The Wallens, they, they took the run game away. I, think I mean, dropped they, off think there, of Woodham Montgomery. They, how is. many yards did he get, 25 yards? He, got uh, he had much? 12 carries for 31 yards. There you go. Yeah. That was close. I wasn't even counting. I'm just saying he didn't get a lot of yards. No. And that's a great back. If that defense well, couldn't line run the made ball. sure they said New Orleans game in that game could say they're not going to run the ball. That's bottom line. And you know me, Phil. If I'm coaching against somebody that has a great running back, he's not running the ball. Right. And you can shut that guy off. I'm, I'm telling you. You might have given away a few other things, but you can shut that guy off. And that's what they did today. They made you one-dimensional. And then what I'm trying to say, and that's just my opinion, I thought he threw the ball pretty well. Never saw him throw that ball with accuracy like that. Uh, well, I don't know what the stats were, how many how many he completed, but he was right he around was it. 19 of 29, 199 yards and a touchdown. But, yeah, I, I, I didn't think I, – I do agree he had some throws where I, I not normally – Used to Mitch with that, seeing the the accurate passes there, but still, what turned me off from the whole thing, Coach, with Mitch was on that fourth down when he rolled out and he's got his hand on his blocker, oh, and yeah. he before runs out of half. he runs out of bounds before halftime. And I'm like, this is this is the playoffs. This is what it's all about, and you're you're deciding yeah. to to go out of bounds short of the sticks. And to me, that I've talked about this numerous times on this show. Upstairs, I just don't think Mitch has what you need to be a sustainable NFL quarterback. Yes, the coaching staff does not help. The players have to also help you out. But I just, I, I well, to he me, doesn't have, he doesn't have what Breeze has. I mean, he means no. play. Breeze is just incredible. Yeah, but he's got a twenty years experience. Sure, know, he's. I mean, fantastic. I mean, that drop off to that running back. To make that first down, that oh. was an incredible play. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, instinctively. That was right. Really, he uh, knows the whole offense. Yeah, Here's he knows. what I have a problem with, Mitch. I, I saw well, Xavier I, I don't want you, one I don't for want you 10 on third downs. Uh, the third and all, nine. But... The third and nine. You're still in this game. It's 14 to three. Third and nine. He fucking short hops a deep out. Yeah, that's got to be an easy throw. You're in the pocket. I get it. This offensive line has been pathetic all year. So you got things against you. The offensive line, the play caller, the, the head coach and his philosophy and how they block. We 
broke that down. We'll break it down again next Saturday. We'll be looking at this game, me and my dad. Oh. Obviously, I'll break down the tape this week. But then you got players fighting, getting manipulated into penalties. So this whole thing is in Phil, utter we talk, chaos. We talked about we talked about that here. So uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, I think, or maybe I might have it yes. mixed up. Yeah, twenty two. You knew going into this game that he's an instigator. We, we and it's not just. I mean, something. yeah, and that's that's the thing. And now he he's done it to <laughs> Javon Wims and say it, as long as you don't turn your head. In. Absolutely, head. absolutely. And it, to me, to call him an asshole or something like that. And just, yeah, well, you know, didn't say anything else, and he threw a punch at him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what it looks like. Here it is yeah. That's... And what it is. <laughs> It's there at all. What did Go out and play better the next down. Now he and he goes off onto the side. Do? Turn your head, yeah. Fuck you. I'm coming next play. Why right. are see you, you in 40 play? seconds? That's he that should be the exactly. Yeah. Well, this and, and it is a reflect, Phil, what you were. What would you well, do? You too. What would you no, do? I, I want to go back to defending myself and saying that he had a good game, a, a decent game. I don't think he's a pro caliber. He's not a franchise. Let me put it that way. He's not a franchise quarterback. And the Bears are never going to win with a guy like that. And there's multiple reasons, and probably because of the coaching staff, number one. He's had three. What does he have? Two coaching staffs already, this kid? Yep. Two. Yep. Two. He's got three okay, offices. so he's getting he's three all. Okay. Three OCs. That's, not my, that's, that's a big problem for anybody. It, right. It, it, you lose your confidence with a lot of things. You don't have the the confidence to go out all out to do whatever, but he's still not a, he's still not the guy. So you're going to have to get another guy. Now you don't want to leave this coach to get another guy because this guy should be at it. <laughs> and the new coach should come in with the new coach. I mean, the new co quarterback should come in with the new coach. That's what's got to happen. I, I just don't see this kid winning championships from the bears. I don't know now. And I mean, he's, he's a free agent. So, I mean, you can't invest you know, he's an unrestricted free agent. The Bears declined his fifth year option. So now he's not, I he's, he's no, not no, no. Sign, he'll be a backup quarterback with somebody. I I agree. Shane, look at the kid from Washington coming in in a yeah. playoff game, Heinke oh last night. And then I was I couldn't look wait to at talk about it. Mitch Trubisky. Do yeah. you see the difference? Like yeah. you you don't have to have 55 60 years of football experience like you dad to see and recognize a gamer a guy that's gonna make plays you just talked about breeze he's just instinctively knowing mitch don't know that first third down of the fucking game watch david montgomery on an arrow wide open yeah on the, on the third down yeah wide open yeah right there yeah 40 yards, first down. We're cooking with gas. Because he doesn't nope. have – Let's throw it to Komet. It bounces off the fucking sky. It, yeah. It's over and yeah. over. It's – Yeah. You People are getting – I can't see know. as well as you, Deb, because you have bigger screens. I'm looking at my – and I – We got to get I can't see the whole screen. Five yeah. inch. We got to yeah. get you a bigger screen. Yeah. I'm Listen. Gonna, I'm planning on getting it, believe me. Well, I'll go with you and pick it out or shane will pick it out online and then we'll pick it up because you need to get a bigger screen but i'm keeping it 100 here this is not an arm wrestling match of who is at blame more because that to me is easy it's the head coach he's no doubt about it i know that about it. i agree with it you exactly. know and you see him today it's consoling everybody yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was yeah, consoling. He was, he was consoling Anthony Miller on the sidelines for getting thrown out of a playoff game. Apparently, yeah. I have two guys. One of which I can't mention their name. That said, he headbutted the coach, Anthony Miller. Headbutted the head coach after oh. that in frustration. Like mm. I didn't see. I saw the the face to face. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see, see a headbutt. I didn't see. A I was told by someone in he might have stands that he might have headbutted him again. Maybe you said something. You saw you know, the reaction, but are you ever are you going to turn this all of a sudden next year? It's going to change because there's no Mitch. We're going to give no. Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace another shot at picking a quarterback. 
Where's wow. Nick Foles going to be your quarterback? And we're going to roll with that. This guy, Matt Nagy, is so overwhelmed. Whatever Mitch is, is that's over now. The curtain just fell. People love Mitch. People hate Mitch. I really believe if you had a really good head coach with an offensive mind, you've said it before, Dad. There's no scheme here. Yeah. There's just plays but being he, called. But He's it's not four, it's that four guy. years in. If he had got him his first year and the guy stayed, you know what I mean? Right. He had been probably a decent quarterback, really. And I don't know how good he would be after that because I think I agree with Shane. I don't know what he's yeah. got up here. That's yeah, and the, Coach, Coach, what it, what does it say to you when you see a guy like Trubisky? Like Phil, Phil pointed out, the Bears deferred, so they had the ball coming out of the second half. But right before half, yeah, a minute, minute and 22 seconds left on the clock. The Bears have first down. You see three, conse three consecutive runs with a minute 22 left before half, and you get the ball coming out of half. I, I was I was saying, what the heck are these guys doing? They should yeah, be throwing it, the ball. Yeah, that's a field, 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 field goal. Right? And it, but it says everything in the world about what he thinks about his quarterback, to me, in that situation. I mean, you're you're essentially you're you're neutering him exactly. there and then Ryan the, Nall's in the game. The ridiculous the ridiculous unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on eighty five on Cole Komet for throwing the ball to the to the ref and they flag him for that. That gives the Bears third and twenty. I think he's and, on. Let's go to the co I'm sorry. Oh Nagy's up. Yeah, go ahead. Whoop. I think Claudio's having some technical issues. Yeah, that screen is too small. I'm gonna bring make it bigger, Claude. But it's freezing up here. Yeah, we struggled, you know, to be one of ten. Um, you know, when you have an opportunity to make, to make some big plays, you got to be able to make those opportunities against a really good football team. You give credit to Sean Payton and, and that team. They're, he they love to a throw the bouquets to They're cover tough, that. You know? And so uh, in all three phases for us, we just didn't put it together. Um, and we, we know that we got to uh, we got to be better and we got to score more points um, defense. I don't know if you can grab it, Shane, because yeah, 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 yeah just guys came let up. me. Take yeah, it down and I'll go grab it. Well, yeah. just get off of it and I'll remove that. Uh, and so that part was good. Shane will get um, it, Claude. you know, we struggled to get that run. Yeah, just close it out. Claude, just put up the comments. I don't know what you're going to hear anyway from this guy. It should have been George McCaskey coming to the podium. We want to announce we fired our head coach. Um, we're moving on. The search begins now for a championship because I want anybody, any PFF stat boy, come on the show. You have an open invitation in the next two weeks. This week, we have Paige DeMacos from Every NFL, NFL Draft. Uh, What's her what site, Shane? Fact. Matter of fact, Jason, I just told the guys in the locker room that um, for us to There's get Shane better pulling and that up. Uh, the team that we need to be. That's something that we'll do here in the off season is make Just sure that make it big, Shane, weakness, on your end, on that side. And yeah. that's going to take everybody. So um, today, wasn't there you good go. Enough. And you look at a team. There like you go. There you go. Now turn it up a little bit. On the coaching side, player wise, um, much clearer I than Claudio's. That's a, that's a start for us to realize. Hey, if you want to, you want to go ahead and do damage in the playoffs. You can see situationally. Um, Situ situational kind of stuff how we got to be better so we, we we have to be better in a lot of different areas and that's my job is to make sure that that happens and we got to learn from that so um, i would say yeah i mean every year is a little bit different yep, yep. you mentioned anthony miller and you said he's got to learn from that i mean you guys already has <laughs> got app. the have locker seen, room he, uh, like you felt yeah. almost betrayed when he controls that locker. and now how do you feel now to see anthony miller do it in good, question. So good question so here's what i would say to that you know <laughs> let me Get the political we spent some time now on, on uh, Wednesday morning as a team. We spent time literally showing and explaining a particular player's actions in, in games, yeah, and teaching it. And, and you know, that's taking 10 or 15 minutes out of your day, which is precious, right? And so, when you do that, I think it's a valuable lesson for our guys 
is we already knew going into this thing <laughs> about some of that, right? What are we talking about? Every action has a reaction. And so uh, I think it's a valuable learning, especially when we're, we're low with numbers at the wide receiver position and the value oh of that zebra position for us. Why don't you so, just tell us how you dealt with it? Where, um, exactly. Or how you're going to deal with it. Understand you know what? The, you should just play the uh, Brady Bunch commercial song while he's talking. And Here's a story understand that. And, of a and lovely right, locker that room. That that happened and, and, and I'm really – get this fucking clown out. What are you doing? Are you serious? Man, you nice beard, by the play, way. And it's right Looking there, a fucking Viking. Just he's starting to turn well, into I mean, the form of Brad Children. Look at him. He's guys. starting to look no, like Brad Children. I'll never uh, question their effort. I'll play. never. I got these guys in the locker room. They're they're so, fighting. Um, I'd be sitting here blowing bouquets and kisses and farting. That hurt. But I, I'm never gonna. You know. You know. Of all the people, Javon Williams. Um, oh, Javon's a great that, guy. Been sitting uh, in the playbook now for for weeks. We've we, we've, we've been, been waiting on this moment. We've, it. Um, we've been waiting for the right time, and here our guys is. knew um, when it was coming. Oh my on. God! So just you talk videos, about a leader. It's unfortunate because it's again, a leader. another learning tool. Against a team like this, this guy and leads the fucking block boys. That's what he. Right? He's, Javon, they're comfortable with a guy that Javon relies on numbers. That. But we all need to learn that when that get him, Asante did a great job of giving him a chance and put great air on the ball. And Javon, it was a perfect pass. It's a perfect pass. Step of that, great air on the ball. So when that happens, um, to to teams that got to grow in that scenario, this guy has become Brad Childress. Look at him. Don't let that deflate you. And so I I, I really feel like everybody, the overwhelmed leader of men. Let's get the next one. He's and, so. Uh, oh, this is the playoffs. JJ, be shoe, Matt. Matt, the decision to to run it three times there at the end of the thank first you, half, JJ. Get to halftime and then try to My find boy. some solutions uh, and some answers as an offense at that point. Yeah, we. It was a field position, JJ. I didn't like the field position. You're eight and eight. You all need to understand. You're eight and eight the in the fucking team. playoffs. Um, let's, you don't let's, like the field let's position. Let's see where we can go. Play with soccer. With with. Uh, let's oh my fucking god! Team. I'm and, sorry. Oh, the field position was so bad. He didn't like it, the field you, position, you Shane. They, they called a timeout. He didn't like the fuck. And fucking so, Brad Biggs didn't like his pizza no, he ordered last night. Didn't quarter. stop him from um, eating. At that point in time, that Fuck. was really the mindset just because of the God. Now you end up getting oh the first down. Lord, I can't. Now flips. Now this is football? Quarter, so this is fucking yeah. eight and eight back into the playoff. Kevin, I don't want to do anything stupid. Oh, my God. Hey, man, did, you, did you get any explanation? guy that wins a million dollars and is afraid to spend it. Spend a dollar. The explanation that was told to me is that he was. I don't think you realize how it. fucking um, I didn't, an I, indictment I that see is. Any replays, and That's I was, an indictment. I, was told, I mean, Cole and our coaches on on staff you said can't he was make this up if you tried. And so I was told that he was throwing the ball to the player like it was taunting. And People defend I, this I, guy. I, seen it I this point, I can't I believe seen a fucking that, Jake from State this, Farm calls a better game. And for us to have that field position, we had. Um, you know, now it's get him morning. back. He uh, is a real estate agent. I haven't seen it, so I, I gotta see what. Of happens. course, he's so putting I, points I, in the know, fucking mortgage. That's it. He ain't putting it on the field I, until I see it. I gotta believe what he's saying. Move Again, Weedover. Best question, JJ. Yeah, to, Great the job. Last moment. What about that trick play? This I I I want to stop the show. I'm fucking so embarrassed about that. You have no idea. Disparity today. I didn't like the field yeah, so, position. So what's your question? I'm stuck the there. What was it? What, what was it? That to you watched so the Colts well game? You there no, here, well, um, that formation. Put that some fucking pressure on this out jackass. Out of, uh, all season. Your defense and, played their asses off. You know, you did nothing. Last week uh, and, and possibility at the right time. But then once we knew going into this week uh, where we were, we knew exactly when we got to a certain spot that it was coming out. Our guys knew it uh, for days. Oh, my and God. So it's like one of those ones where you just, you know, especially it was coming. I think Could was someone coming remind out. me? Because so, all I um, see is 22-yard line. Uh, where did they get the, the ball perfectly. I mean, it's exactly starting with want. one minute 22 to go? Throw, and it's just, we just didn't, we didn't I need get, uh, that info uh, in the chat. Somebody give me that. Third down, the wide Probably part. the 30-yard line. Um, 
That's a good question. <laughs> he they're, didn't like they're the really fucking good field position. Disguising How about you don't like your job? Your, your job is to attack. Today, you wanted to be which, aggressive. Which we've been seeing a lot of. Um, they got a lot players. of the zone. And, and so there was a couple times where uh, I'll have to go back and watch, but you just felt like whether it was uh, the protection or whether it was a throw or whether it was a, a route. But it just, no matter any way you look at it, we just oh you can't be one for 10 and think you're going to have a chance to win the game. You can't. This Too guy coach. is the Brett biggest Mason. clown. Tell him, Matt. Playoff game, and you're limiting the amount of questions guys, uh, he can answer. You guys rallied to get into the playoffs. Here's Brad Biggs. Ultimately, you lose uh, eight of your final 11 games. Yeah. Eight of your final He's 11. Kind Let's, of trending yes, positive that's a good narrative. As you, as you look forward been to fucking protecting this guy. a plan for the offseason. Yeah, so. You've lost eight of your you know, last when you, 11. When you look at it that wow. way and you say, man, you yeah, lost. Look you at lost him. Look at him. He's uncomfortable. The, the um, Better believe it. We need to do as a staff. You should be. We got to say, okay. Um, why is that? Where is it? And, and how do we? How do you we should know the and why. There's a you know. Where's Acevedo? Get the quote. This right know now, the why. I think, um, Get the hook. Identity wise, as an offense, you guys could see that we. we Where's felt Kinky like we, Shepherd? We an Get the fucking hook on the um, Apollo. Yeah, what do we? How do we learn from that? Well, Get him out. Is, um, you see oh that my in, God. in games like today. Let me remind um, you, no Matt. What your identity is? You always got to be able to learn football. Your identity, right there. A and, bunch and of fucking clowns that, playing uh, for you. you. Not for they don't care runs, about you. But you're gonna have a they lot care about themselves. Fives and second and because you've and defined be you. Which then keeps you out of so the So you're the problem. And third and longs versus any defense. Third and longs. You're in third and long. You guys can't tackle. And um, and so what we need to do is. is we'll you're in third and long. You're running fucking read option. Your quarterback doesn't pull. Uh, where are we? How do we get better? We know this is. You don't get enough. better. You uh, get better and, at your next job. You, you should be the charter franchise. Your Super expectation goal. should be the, not to, make to be better than this. Um, are you kidding? You know, we just We're going to celebrate eight and eight. And evaluate all that stuff. And we obviously know a lot of things. Eight and nine. So. Last one. Eight Pat and Finley. nine. You're right. Let's not forget. Eight and nine. Uh, two part question. Well, Have you been told that you're eight of your last eleven and number two, your staff. The last. This is important. Listen to this. Had two off seasons. Has had a lot of turnover. What will you evaluate if you're back next year in terms of whether you need if. to make changes among your group? We haven't gotten into any of that, that in regards to that stuff. Um, you know, again, like I told you all at the beginning of the week, we, we've been you fired so focused in on the best offensive and, line coach and then in the same country. thing goes with the staff. Again, it's like you, you got you, you all know. I mean, it's probably not just our staff. It's probably a lot of staffs with whether it's promotions or demotions or whatever. There's always change. That's just that's, Get that's rid just of this guy. So, um, that's it's changed that the line coach. Here. Who's the line coach? As a, as a Juan uh, Castillo. We'll do all I'm gonna, that guy from Notre Dame. Dame. No, stuff and talk to the no. Guys, no. The no, guy from Notre Dame was before him. Um, I, again, well, I'm just at a I'm going to tell right you the story. Said, Steve Edwards. Uh, I I appreciate um, um, the fight of these players, and now tomorrow we'll discuss the other stuff. Thanks, Coach Ross. I hope they discuss with you. Goodbye. 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 It's like a fucking rerun. Get rid of the show because the show sucks. Let me say oh, this, Dad, yeah. real quick to answer your question. It's an important one because you and I were breaking down the tape on X's with the O's on our patron channel. Right. So run that brand banner down below. Become a patron and you're going to get all these extra shows. X's with the O's this week. We were breaking down inside zone and how the offensive line are blocking it and the guards not getting up on the second level. You saw it again today. They can't run the football because they don't know their assignments. So former Chicago Bear Steve Edwards' dad was on our show this week, and he was coached by Juan Castillo and Harry Heastan. And he verified, he's probably in the chat or listening now, he verified that Harry Heastan wants to block differently than Matt Nagy would allow. So they wow. was dissension between the offensive line coach and the head coach, and the head they coach fired. fired him. They fired Harry Heastan, whose job, whose reputation coach. is a great football oh. coach, offensive line coach, who's fiery. The Olin Krutz, your buddy, the center, going to be a Hall of Famer, speaks about Harry Heastan like Shane and I speak about you. So did Steve. But Steve doubled down and said Juan Castillo is dealing with the same thing. 
So you want to run the ball, but you got a head coach that says, no, we're going to run it like this. And this is the way I want it blocked. Now you got problems. Wow. You got, now you got, certainly problems. got problems. You know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to make it simple. Like when I coached, I said, you know, you got, think about it. Half of the plays you're cutting off because they're going away from you. So if you can teach that and right. really define that, you have really solved the problem. Like you were talking about, you know, when you're breaking down things and you're looking at number 72. Yep. And yep. he constantly misses people. If he did that in a drill, you'd take his ass out right now. Exactly. You're doing that every day until he gets better at it or he gets out of here. Just everyday exactly. drill. Cut every off. day. Cut every off. Every day drill. Especially Both sides the of the line. Zone, zone, zone. They're running inside, outside. They're bringing the trap back. They do. Listen, it doesn't make a difference plays. what offense you. It doesn't make a difference what offense you. You're running a triple option. You got a cut off on the backside. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna double team. Get off the tackle because he's the first read. You got to seal down on the linebacker, double the nose, and whatever you got to do. Depends on the defense. But my point is that half of your plays are away from you. Mm -hmm. That's so important. That cut off situation. And you got to do it right. We're going to get into that. We are going to take, obviously, you all listening to this show, Bears Hour Live after every game. Shane and I are discussing how oh, we're I got to do this I show. One, one second. Thing. One second. Don't forget. And this week, I'll break down the tape. That'll be out. And I'll break down this playoffs. And then on Saturday, if you're a patron, as you've seen, you patrons, me and my father will take five or six. We're going to take six plays again, and we're going to break down how this offensive line and how this offense is being coached and what is being taught like nobody else. Live with you, and you'll get to ask questions and be completely involved in what we call X's with the O's. It's a coaching clinic. Now, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, real quick, I got that. Go, go ahead, coach. Go ahead, coach. No, no, I, I, I wanted to apologize. I wanted to say something that was pertinent to the cutoff and simplicity. Okay, yeah. You know. Yes. And you do the same thing with the onside. You know, the play side. Everybody, you work on every play. If you have twenty plays, it takes a long time to do it, but it, they understand it. Then they don't have to worry about plays. They know it's coming to the side, and they block it that way. That's what I'm trying to say. It simplifies things. And pass protection is probably the hardest thing you have to teach. It breaks, takes so much of your time. But those pro athletes, they're in, they're, this is their job. They're in there eight hours a day. They should learn the darn thing. They should have Absolutely. the intelligence. And It's no doubt. People, it's oh, no it doubt. something I, I wanted to say to you and I think I didn't refer to it, but I love what New England did. And I remember I said that, and I didn't follow it up, I don't think. Maybe a question came in. But every lineman on the, on the team for the New England Patriots has to learn how to play center, guard, and tackle, front side and back side. Mm -hmm. They all have to learn. Now, what that happens, what, what it does is that you don't have to have as many linemen. Let's say you've got to have 12 linemen or 14 linemen. They only have 10 linemen. That's what they have. Versatility. Versatility, yes. Yes. preparedness, <laughs> all of these things. And it's Plus most they, important. Oh, that's what it was. Teaching. The other thing I wanted. It's and teaching. Now I remember what I wanted to say. Go ahead. When you draft people, you draft intelligence. It's got to be the number one priority. It can't be wow. somebody that can't remember plays. Got, I mean, at that level. <laughs> Shay, yeah. you know? go ahead, Shay. Talk about what we found out about our wide receiver core. In intelligence, I think you saw it today, and you saw it the first time you played yeah. the Saints. Where intelligence, yeah, I had a, I had a uh, patron from TTNL Network. I won't give his name, just yeah, don't, his don't his anything. one of his very close friends is neighbors with the Bears wide receiver coach, and the wide receiver coach, and not so many words has said hey, off the record. Yeah, off the record, said Take this for what it's worth. Wink, wink. He's got the worst wide receiver room that he's ever been in, in terms of football acumen and intelligence, other than Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney. Everybody else, 
So they're all it, screwing around. They're not yeah. they're laughing oh. and it's joking. Well, you see, oh, Javon, <laughs> you see it with Javon Wims. And in this is a perfect time, Phil. Here I have the uh, clip for you with Anthony Miller and Coach Nagy after okay, his ejection. It. Yeah, here you go. Let's see what happens. I don't think there's a headbutt. I think he stomps his foot here at the end when he's pissed. But You can't be doing this to us. Oh, yeah, it's no headbutt. No, uh, that's wanna, not headbutt. He's pulling away again. from him. That's, yeah. You don't want to listen to him. You don't that's him to him. saying, get off the field. Don't cost us another 15 yards here. That's what he's saying to him. And he's like, fuck this. I'm yeah. out. Fuck this shit. I'm out. You know that song? It's like... Anyway, why is he in the game? Why are these guys in position to be able to do that? I wanted to address some people that have defended Matt Nagy. And perfect, my father here has a head coach of 33 years. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Dad. And then I want you to address it. Then we're going to get some guests. I, I, Two patrons reached out. We'll try – it's best, but I want you to answer this. When a player, selfishly, for those just tuning in, let's just show this. In the moment, this is a close game, okay? Here it is one more time. And he punches a guy in the face that's running his mouth on him and selfishly gets ejected from the football game. Now, a head coach that has accountability and control – doesn't that voice, a hey, coach will fucking kill me if I step across this selfish line and exactly. punch another player? Exactly. They know the rules. Exactly. You're out of the game and you're not playing next week either. Exactly. You it's know. you got to set the tone. you, you got to set the tone. That's a reflection of the head coach if I've ever seen it. It's He sat there and said. The officials should have down. to take him out of the game. The coach would take him out of the game. Exactly. Get off the but, field. But the reality is the coach said he sat them down in this presser and talked to them yeah, about just... this, and it still happened. So you think they respect this head coach? Are you no. kidding me? No. I wouldn't even all talk I can think to of, that All of I can think of is Bill like, Belichick. Fuck out of here. Bill Belichick, you're not dressed right or you said something wrong, and they trade you. <laughs> exactly. Butler, Malcolm so, Butler. They traded yeah. him. They traded Phil, him because he said some things wrong. Maybe I missed this in the presser when Nagy was on, but it could have been when we were switching over. But Matt Nagy addressed, did you hear it? He addressed the Bears had a separate meeting leading yeah, into this week. Okay, I guess I missed that part. Yeah, yeah and I, I said. I'm talking over it, bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that. and that's. Well, I was doing other stuff, so I guess I missed that. But that that goes along with what Mike Furry is talking about with with his room, where you're putting your, you know, whatever, however you want to phrase it, they're they're putting themselves above the team. And I mean, how many people get th- get ejected from a playoff game? How many times have you seen that in your history? It, it's it's a pretty rare occurrence. It's a I. I I I'll tell you, know. unfortunately, it didn't happen in the New Orleans-Dallas game when the guy butted that receiver and didn't even get a penalty. That yep. guy should have been out of the game. And yep. there should have been a 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct, well, including you know maybe a 30-yard penalty. You know this guy, Sean Payton, plays to the edge of the whistle, maybe more. He's got his guys playing a bully Steve brand. Edwards talked it about it on our show to be on the lookout for it, and he was one hundred percent right. And and we saw it, and you got suckered into it. Win on the whistle. Win in the next forty seconds. I really think it's a showcase of a terrible head coach who's friends with everybody. Just like you said, he's apologizing for everybody while not holding anybody accountable. That's not the CEO. The CEO. Look at this. Anybody who wants to defend Matt Nagy, you've never played the game of football, think about your mom or your dad. You know, think about your parents getting in your ass about whatever it is. Do you do it again? If you did, then you don't give a fuck about your parent. That's the reality. But if you you learned your lesson when your father and your mom reamed your ass and you knew the line, you're a professional. You got 
selfishly did what you decided to do, and it's disgusting on all it levels. Is. Yeah, right. And you have such a an emotional outlook on this thing, and and I I want to forgive you for expressing yourself with so many words. <laughs> <laughs> I think hey, I got better it. off with saying that's the freaking what, thing. I tell well, you that's right what, now. that apple fell off the wrong tree, huh, Coach? <laughs> but anyway, uh, you're right. I, I just wanted to give you an illustration of something. I was at the University of Nebraska, and I won't tell you the year because then you will know the coach, and I don't want to refer to his name. But we mm. were a terrible football team. They won three games that year. I was a red shirt. But you know something? When they had to play the big games, they won in spite of their coach, which was a yeah. lousy coach, probably just like this guy. Mm -hmm. And today, the Bears showed me that same example. They could have beaten New Orleans. I'm, I'm telling you, they could have beaten them. They played in spite of their coach. I want to tell you the three teams they beat. Penn State, Oklahoma, they hadn't beaten since 1948. And the third one was the Big Ten champion, Minnesota. Three games. We lost to Iowa State, Kansas State, Texas Oklahoma, I mean, uh, Oklahoma State and those teams. But this is a very good football team. This had, got, this had on our football team, had seven guys went to the NFL. So they're a good football team. But and the what, coach what to them? That's the coach exactly a what terrible I see. coach. Every I'm week, we, I don't, listen, I'm not going on narratives. I'm not trying to write a narrative. You know the amount of work that this network and myself put into cutting the tape and breaking it down without an agenda. It is seen there. So those people that stand on their soapbox on Sunday night and say, no, 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 no. By Wednesday or Thursday when the tape's released, I've gotten a many of an apology. I say, wow, when you see behind and see what this Seems. offensive line is doing and – the way they're being coached fundamentally, then you're a hundred percent right. They're winning. They're eight and eight football team without a leader of men. I will go die on my grave knowing that this coach is the problem. This coach is the problem. And your story about Nebraska is a perfect showcase of that because I, I mean that. Blame Pagano, you could blame a lot of people, but the reality is it starts with the head guy. You want to see Mitch's last <laughs> showcase here? Hey, Mitch, how are you? Watch for the water bottle. I'm good. Uh, Mitch, do you want to be back here next year? <laughs> Jesus, Pat. Well, Fucking. Yeah, I think, um, I think <laughs> I'm dumb. see myself back here next year. Obviously, a lot of that's out of my what control. What a dumb fucking Can you question. make that a little louder? Yeah, yeah. can you turn it up? It feels like home, and it feels like we have unfinished business. Um, and, and right now, I'm really just um, bummed about how the season being over and how the game went. So a lot of emotions going on right now. But um, I, I could see, I could see that. But we'll, we'll see. There's a, there's a lot of things that got to ha happen, and a lot of decisions that got to be made, and um, it's out of my control. But I, I could see that. Dion Miller. Oh boy, that's a good answer. Mitch, how do you control? think you um, performed over these last few games after coming back from being benched? And and what do you think that says about you to the franchise? I feel like I got better. I feel like I got better this year. I felt like when I was put back in the starting lineup that the offense was better and I gave my, my team a, a chance to win. Um, and we did win games. And that's why oh, we I were able to get back into the playoffs. Um, Can you it, get it, it out? It just me, but it was the whole unit coming together and the team Try making plays. Um, really getting through that adversity together, but I feel like I was a big part of that. Um, so there are some good things that we did towards the end of the season that helped us put it, put us in a position to nope. be able to play here tonight. But that's not how we probably want to finish. We're still so finished the season eight and eight, there. slid into oh, the playoffs. We did that back. last year, so Fine. there's still things that need to be changed. Um, there's still a the lot bears of areas block. we need to grow in. Don't worry in about the bears. Unfollow the bears block. Um, Talk about lack of football to. acumen. So, uh, I think we have. Some follow pieces, that guy. You might uh, as well jump in the midst of something. We need to do better. We need to figure that out. Dan Wiederer. 
Mitch, when you took the, the flip from CP and you looked downfield, what's going through your mind there when you had Javon deep there? <laughs> what do you think? I got to get um, this to this yeah, guy. It was wide open. Ball. It was a touchdown. So yeah, there you, you go. You don't get a lot of opportunities like that and get your guy um, pretty pretty wide open behind the safety. A play we've been practicing for the last few weeks. Um, I was excited. Coach, coach got it called. Um, and that definitely would have helped early on get on the board and, and getting us some momentum. Um, so I, I thought it was going to be a touchdown, but got to have that next play mentality. But we just um, – overall, we're just sloppy tonight. Is there a name to that play? Oh, please give um, us a funny one. Willy Wonka, something stupid. Yeah, I need it. I don't, don't want to say it. Exactly, because it's something dumb. Jason Like Leisure. the coach. He doesn't want to say it. Mitch, how well, do you explain the drop-off that the, the offense has when it looks so good against – uh, the Lions and the Texans and the Jaguars, and then against Green Bay and New Browns Orleans, up twenty-eight to nothing. With no head, co- with no head coach. A lot of no head coach. I think it comes down to execution. We probably win without our some things. I think we can do differently. Game Hire players, us. Um, just to put ourselves in a better position early on, but uh, it always comes down to the basics at the end of the day. Are we doing good on third down? Um, and tonight oh we were not. God, these um, questions. Were we inf- efficient on first and second down? Tonight <laughs> we were not. So we were third and longs. Third, Fire Nagy. Um, third and longs. <laughs> exactly. And very manageable. And it's called a flea flicker Nagy. Execute, so Get out. ourselves in the foot a lot. I didn't think we played very smart tonight uh, with the penalties. And it, it, it was just sloppy. So, like I said, there's a lot of things that we need to do better. A lot of things that need to change. Um, and a lot of it is – the, the, the culture and, and what we I accept said, and, and what we I don't. Said, so I said, uh, keep getting better. Javon Wims will be on good morning. You got to play your best ball against, against better drop. teams like that, especially like right where we're at last week. And the Saints the this same week. old, we same old. Show up to play and it's the kicker. Everybody's got to be on the same page. Receiver. So, sloppy for us, so that's why we didn't get the result we wanted. Don't you give me Graham. more here for Mitch. JJ. Mitch, the, you guys have built that offensive identity through the month of December. I guess, can you put a Playing finger on why game. that kind of escaped you guys? And, and do you feel like you were still put in the best positions to succeed against ask some better What is the like culture the Saints? of Matt Nagy? Yeah, I don't what know. I think we just kind of got away from it tonight to a little bit. Um, uh, I'm not sure why. I just – uh, just go out there, try to do my job to the best of my ability, and, and try to go out there and lead my teammates. Matt Nagy, um, offensive guru. When you're not 30, efficient on first, second three, down, and they're putting, oh, you on, three, putting you in known passing man. situations, you also got to be able to pass the ball and convert on third down that way. But we, we didn't tonight. And, um, oh, my God. We, just, we didn't execute. We didn't put ourselves in a good position. We got to get that running game going a little bit more. Um, so he's everything just, else can come off. He's that. a loyal guy. Um, you got to give them credit. They they came out. You should they, not they have any loyalty. Better than we did. They were better sold them out, better, benched them. Um, benched them. Away from my guys. And, um, I know. He's being way that we battled all, all year long. And they, they still going to be a free agent. He's on an interview right now. Is this guy someone that's going to throw everybody under the bus? His agent's already told You don't say shit about the head coach. You don't burn. Don't say anything. Last one, Colleen Kane. Hey, Mitch, just kind of going off Pat's question to open this, um, just with the uncertainty for you going into the offseason, have you, how do you kind of process that this potentially could be your last start with the Bears? Um, what I do, yeah, it- I think it's uh, it's emotional and it was in the locker room, but we've been, we've been through so much as a team this year and it's just a special moment to, to share with the guys and just show your appreciation for everything they've done uh, over when the course the last- of this year. And really a lot of these guys I've like been with for four years. So um, that's really special to me, Seriously. especially seeing the guys up front, like, like Cody and Leno, um, seen them in they've the had my back since I've been here and, and yeah. those guys, uh, among many others mean so much to me. So it's right. tough and you, you try not to think about too far down the line and just take it one day at a time. And, uh, I know there's decisions that are going to be made this off season. And, um, I, f- I feel like I, I've gotten better over these four years and really this season, it's been tough. There's been some ups and downs, but. Um, I'm proud of where I'm at and, and where we where we battled and how we got better over the years. So we'll just take it one day at a time this off season. And uh, I know God's got a plan for me. So I'm just continue to stay positive and, and keep working and, and keep believing. That's all. all Thanks, right. Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Goodbye, Mitch. It might be the last time you see Mitch Trubisky as a Chicago Bear. Listen, I want to say this before we get to our first patron. Fired up guest, Dad. I don't know if you have final thoughts. Do you have to go? Or are you going to stay for a little bit? 
I'm going to stay until the battery goes out. <laughs> yeah. battery battery we got to upgrade your phone. One of us. I'm is, going to check on the battery tomorrow. Okay. Just go into T-Mobile. You're 80 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. Just use that as the crutch and yeah. be like, I'm 80. I need some. My phone's dying. <laughs> Do a show every week. They'll give you an iPhone 12. I always do the negotiations for my dad when it comes to that stuff. We got to get you a 65 inch TV, Shane. There you go. We we'll, get get him him we'll get him hooked up. <laughs> Listen, let me say this. I'm serious now. I'm not in the. I already ranted. I swore. I got all that out of me. We're going to get into the officials and all that stuff. But I want to say this one last thing about Mitch and Nagy. That relationship can't work. It just can't. They're not a fit for one another. When you have a shoe salesman, a guy that's not a leader of men, is just a play caller. He's never been a head coach before. And let's just be honest, he's overwhelmed at the position now. To sit there as a McCaskey, as an NFL person, to think that Matt Nagy in one offseason is going to turn this ship around and become something he's never shown you to be, is asinine it's fool's gold it's wrong and i'm just saying i don't give a shit you could say well they don't have the money i'm a bear's blog i'm a bear the bear's blog they they the mccaskies have a billions 20 million to them is nothing <laughs> okay let's hire a whole new staff for spending 20 because you know what that's important to the business the person who's coaching, the CEO, fuck the GM and all that shit. At the end of the day, the guy that's deciding, the personnel. Oh, by the way, Riley Ridley can play, Shane. Did you yeah. see him? Did you see him? when he gets a chance, he can catch and run? The guy who's deciding the personnel. Oh, 32 can play. He's a better running back than 84. I just want you to know that Matt Nagy still hasn't figured that out. And that's the problem. Mitch... And the energy of the city and the belief and all of that is ghost. It's gone. It's over. But Nat Nagy is a big You issue. just need it. You need a guy who has a philosophy, a sound foundation of football. Exactly. And has discipline in his players. You know, I, I love these coaches. I love Bill Parcells. But I love uh, Bill Parcells. And, You're going to go Bill back Belichick. to Belichick. Those look. guys. Get it. You know. These guys were tough friends. guys. I, I love Nitsky too. I, I, you know, I, I, these guys are tough guys. You got to be. These guys are. These are guys are millionaires. They got to. You got to have put some discipline in them. You know, all of them. Oh, they, they they all make a million dollars a piece. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, we're listen. Every player in the NFL is tremendous. Even my boy Leno. I saw Leno do something he's never done. Pushed the motherfucking pile today. He, he did. Fired up. I was. I even shouted him out. I can't wait to put that on tape because I've never yeah. seen it before. But the reality is, they're all good. It's, it's so important. The head coach. If you learn anything from this network, you better learn that. That's the most important free agents signing is the head coach, not the GM. The GM got to talk to that. They got to communicate. This is what I want. These are the time. And that's important too. But it's telling you who's making these decisions on game day, this inactive roster. It ain't Mike Furry. It ain't Pagano. It is the head coach. All right. We got our first guest, patron. We do it like this, Dad. Got to have hype. I got hype coming out of my ass. It's 100 Crew Hot Takes. Phil and Shane bringing on a fan to talk Bears, and what just happened in the Bears game each and every week. You have to have hype. Phil's always telling me to hype. You can't be flat. So be ready, be prepared and bring your passion. Man, hype coming out of my ass. It's 100 Crew Hot Takes. Hashtag Spencer Strong. Those are big time fucking throws. <laughs> Bears Hour Live. We got our guest here, Gary Williams. 
What's up? What's up? Drop I saw that two. smoke and I thought it was What's Greg up, Braggs man? in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm happy to be on the show. You guys, I follow y'all all the time. Patreon member, you know, I listen. Uh, like, I'm just so excited to be on the show. But I got to talk about this bullshit that we've been seeing all fucking year. And the rest of Matt Nagy's whole fucking tenure. I hope it ends. I'm sorry, coach. I'm sorry for swearing, but I just got to keep it real for a second. Keep it 100. Yes. First of all, how can you show up to a game, the most important game of your life, as the underdog, and you come out unprepared? Unfucking prepared. And Javon Wims, if you're still on the roster next year, then we got some bigger problems. Yeah, okay. I agree. Okay. Absolutely. Because how can you drop a wide open touchdown? Okay, I get it. You made that difficult catch on the sideline. You know, that was a beautiful catch. But then you come back, the the, the momentum changing play of the game. If you would have caught that ball, it would have been a different story, but you couldn't do it. And let and let's talk about Eddie Jackson for a minute. Ugh. Okay. I guess your business decisions is more important than playing hard-nosed football. Ah. Jesus Christ. You're jumping off sides. You can't make open field tackles. Half the time you're loafing. You know, you're getting beat in coverage. I mean, he has no leverage. And and a lot of it, let's be honest, it's Chuck Pagano. (laughs) You can't play off coverage 10 yards off the ball on every play and then play a soft zone. You can't play that. You're going to be beat all the time with adjustments, and you see it. Aaron Rodgers do it to us every time. Drew Brees, as soon as I see off coverage, I'm going quick. I'm either going to call a spot route yep. or I'm going to call a slant. <clears throat> I'm going to beat you because you're showing me what you got. You know, and for all the people that hate on Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack, y'all can kiss my ass. You heard it here first, okay? I'm keeping it 100. Yeah. Okay, those two guys – they get held on every play. Did you see Robert Quinn? He got took down with the with the underhook around his neck oh being turned. On the, the official was yeah. on the touchdown. Yeah, right they, they, didn't, the they didn't even they didn't even call it. Yep. So here's my problem with Matt Nagy. <laughs> Matt Nagy reminds me of the fucking coach from the Water Boy. Okay. You know, he's in his office, he's at the chalkboard, he's trying to draw shit up. You know, he has this fucking play sheet that, you know, he can't get that out of his mind and his head. You're, I'm sorry about the light, that's my, you know, lighting oh, system perfect. that changes. It's perfect. Okay, he can't get it out of his head that you're the head coach. You delegate play calling and other, other tasks to your assistant coaches, Okay. And you can't just be locked in on the offense, okay? I thought it was worse when we had Mark Tressman, but this is like the low of the low, okay? You can never say shit about, you know, Mike Marks being an offensive coordinator or <clears throat> or Ron Turner when he was here. At least Ron Turner when we had Eric Kramer as QB. You know, we had 2,000-yard receivers and we had a 1,000-yard running back. Right. Okay. Right. Now we fire Harry Heastead, who was – Everyone knows he's the best offense alignment or one of the best offense alignment coaches in the NFL to hire Juan Castillo, okay? Let's talk about Juan Castillo for a minute. This is the same guy who was the defensive coordinator in Philadelphia when they were playing the wide nine under Andy Reid, okay? That's when they had the worst defense in NFL history. But all of a sudden, this guy's good enough to coach the offensive line? <laughs> it's terrible, it's terrible. I'm tired of it. I really wish that the McCaskies would stop worrying about their billions of dollars and clean house. Okay. We need to get rid of Ted Phillips, the accountant. You got yep. an accountant running football operations. How asinine is that? Okay. We can talk about Jerry Jones all we want, but we got an accountant running the organization. And then Matt Nagy with your BU culture. BU is B bullshit. Okay. You don't hold your players accountable. You're always talking about how everything looked good in practice. I got news for you, dummy. When you're playing 707 and you're walking through walkthrough drills, everything looks good in practice because you're going half speed. 
You're it's barely getting your feet on the offensive line. We had a great week of practice. Yeah, yeah I was talking about the play today. Shit, but we've had so it in the great. playbook for three three weeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you need to talk about how you're going to block defensive fronts. If it's an odd, you block a certain way. If it's an even, you block a certain way. You know, you got rules as being an offensive lineman, which you have to look for. If someone's in your gap, you're going to block it this way. If they're head up with you, if they're shaded this way, if you're going to kiss, if you're going to rub, we don't do any of that shit. That's why <clears throat> we are so terrible when it comes to pass protection. And on third down, the opposing defenses know it. Okay, exactly. here's the other thing, too, all right? Gary, bringing it. I played high school football for three years. And in college, I took a theories of football class. And, and even when I was, you know, in high school, I wrote my own playbook. I was really into coaching. I coached, you know, middle school for a year. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, if you're going to go four and five wide personnel, you can't have splits within the hash marks. You're basically telling the defense that I'm only going to – I'm going to box the defense into a particular area, and so now I can't stretch the field vertically or horizontally. That's why we're getting beat. And then... <laughs> oh, only you guys make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do it. I mean, we run a good laugh. Two, three, four, five, six yard routes. Okay, mm -hmm. you know our guys. Hell, I don't see any effort out of Javon Williams. Last week, Phil, when you put up the play where on fourth and one, he oh, yeah. could have ran across the formation, right, and tried to get himself open. He was just jogging like, hey, I'm not in the play. So I'm not even going to bother to put forth an effort. Exactly. I tell you. It, and, it's, yeah. and it's just, it goes on and on and on. Cordo Patterson coming in the game. Listen, champ. You're a special teams player. You're not a tailback. You're not even a backup. Exactly. Okay. He has a Cordell Patterson fetish. Okay. The guy runs hard. I give him that. He's a good teammate. But I'm sorry. You're not in the game plan for no more than one or two plays. I need you back on special teams where you can be more effective for me. And Ryan Nall, I'm sorry. You're the training camp, darling, where you look good in training camp for the last three years. But you should not be getting meaningful snaps in the game. You give that ball to David Montgomery. Hell, bring in Akeem Hicks and his lazy ass to play fullback, and you go get us some yards, okay? J.P. Holtz and all these other people who are getting meaningful snaps and reps, they should not be in the game. It drives okay? me crazy. It drives me Every crazy. Man, you're preaching to the choir. It drives me crazy. I watched, I watched the, the Ravens game earlier today right mm -hmm. they got <clears throat> i think it's jason richards right he was a defense alignment 6'3 310 pounds they slapped the fullback number on him and guess what he's in the game making blocks right yep you know and, and the coach is being creative that's called pr creative play calling okay and i'm sorry guys i'm kind of nervous i'm kind of jumbled up no. but um no. you know no, you're doing a great job you're going on your we, rant. You're we can, going on your rant. I love it. Okay. I want to go back to our secondary. <laughs> and I want to go back to Chuck Pagano. Chuck, you're in over your head, buddy. Okay. Your ship is sailed. You don't have Ray Lewis. You don't have Ed Reed. You don't have <clears throat> Chris McAllister. You don't have those guys. Okay. But what you do have, you got Khalil Mack. And you got Robert Quinn, okay? Right there, you should be scheming all types of different right. different formations to get these guys open. I've only seen him all season line up Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn on maybe same. four times on the same side yep. all season long, okay? You got Robert Quinn, who's a 4-3 defensive end, dropping in coverage, okay? They did it again today for like four plays. I'm thinking, Dead. like, what the hell are you doing? You're taking your best, one of your best pass rushers out of the game <clears throat> to cover a running back or a wide yeah. receiver. No coach does that, okay? Khalil Mack, okay? Khalil is a great player, but great players 
you need to put them in a position to succeed. Okay, you saw that he was getting chipped by the running back. Even Taysom Hill chipped him a few times. You know, not to mention he was getting held practically the whole game. You need to move him around. Put him in a different position. Okay, drop down into a different front. Oh my you god! Know, exactly. You, you know, they put him in positions to be successfully one-on-one, -on -one, single block. Force them to have to change their whole game plan. Instead, you just exactly. put him up there. And you yeah. leave them there. All of these things you're saying is why you're a patron on this network. That's why you're on this show. You reached out to me. I know. I felt like you knew this team was going to lose this game. And you wanted to, to, to say your last hurrah to Matt Nagy and Pagano. And you came on here and you did it. And the reality is this point is a great one. Your final one. It might be your best Obviously, all of the other ones is you're preaching what we're preaching. You're a part of this. You're family. Absolutely. With me. And I, I totally love that about this network, about you. But the last point that you made, and especially in a playoff game, it should have happened against the Packers, where you move Khalil Mack inside, line him up in a gap, stand his ass up right in front of Rodgers and get them to have to change their philosophy. And yep. You put the other kid out there. You put Robert Quinn on the left side and you move people around and you fucking attack their front. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the best coaches do that. You know, and you see yeah. it with Wade I mean, Phillips. With he's Aaron somebody Donald, that right? you can't, you can't block. One guy can't block that guy. No, yeah. you can't. You can't. He's a, he's a, he's a freak I mean, like, in nature. He you know, just uh, he's unbelievable. But you, you don't even have to change his position. All you have to do is slant him inside and let the tackle come to the outside and cover him and become the tame man. And he'll Absolutely. disrupt the whole team. Absolutely. He really would. And, and, and that's, part of, that's part of some of the other defensive philosophies I never really understood about Pagano. Okay, you got Quinn and Mac playing a wide nine when they're in their four down front. Okay, you've already committed, exactly. you know, a tackle to be able to run those guys Remember the off. the Giants right? beating the Patriots that were undefeated? You know what they did? They took Michael Strahan, and they put O.C. Umignori, and they moved them everywhere on that line. So yep. every play, the great Bill Belichick, who my dad loved, their offensive line coach, Dante Scarnecchia, he was having trouble, and that fucked Tom Brady up. No matter exactly. what, that was the why they won. Forget the big cat. Obviously, that was huge in the game. But the only reason you're in the game is because Strahan's playing D three technique, and he's beating their guard inside, and they weren't ready for. It. That's the kind of stuff where you right. empty the chamber, Gary. You yep. empty the chamber. You empty the chamber, right? Well, we can see that he was gun. playing with a pop gun, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that> pop gun. <laughs> oh, God. So. So, guys, I want to talk to you about Mitch for a minute, okay? Um, my cousin, Jason Bonds, who's also um, within the chat, I, I got to get him to be a Patreon member so yeah. that he can get some of the other shows. But shouts out to you, cousin, cousin Sean. We had several discussions about Mitch and the problems with Mitch Trubisky and what's wrong with him and things like that. I can tell you this. Mitch is a great athlete, but Mitch is in an NFL starting level caliber quarterback and the reason why he isn't is because he doesn't have a good teacher okay matt Nagy does not how doesn't know how to develop a quarterback okay you were gifted alex smith okay who was a, a nfl veteran right. about time you got to him in in kansas city Okay, you were gifted Patrick Mahomes, and we all know that Andy Reid was, you know, is a quarterback whisperer, right? The work he's done with Foles and, you know, McNabb and, and Michael Vick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nagy's system, I can tell you, based upon what I'm seeing and what, what I'm looking at tape too, Phil, when you um, put the tapes up, it's almost like he's telling or he's teaching – Mitch to go predetermined with the football, right? So mm -hmm. most of the time when you see them snap the ball, he's immediately locked on one guy. So he's never and you know and 
I just put it out there. We know our, our offensive line is like five traffic cones. They don't block worse shit. But it seems to me that Mitch, before the ball is even snapped, he's no he knows who he's throwing to. So he's not even taking a chance to even scan the field. And I think a lot of it's because he's gun shy because you got the wars on one side. <laughs> you got a Fetty who was a cast off from Seattle who Russell Wilson didn't want to <laughs> have this guy blocking for him on the other side. And then we got a merry-go-round in the middle, right? Where sometimes Cody White here looks like, you know, he wants to be, a, you know, on any given play, White here has a good technique or he's sloppy with his footwork. Or Mustafer, who, you know, I think plays with a lot of heart and I love the guy, he right. needs to get stronger, okay? Yeah, he needs to pre- <laughs> take a whole gear work on his body. Right. They were getting James Daniels. But they back. gotta be they gotta also be taught technique. True, right. true. The technique, they need to be taught technique. And if I was him, I'll get on the phone to Olin Cruz and say, Look, teach me yeah. how to play NFL center. Okay. Well, they no. he he already does. They he works okay. with Olin. He, he works with Olin and uh or Alex Bars and Sam both work with Olin. Okay. During the offseason. Okay. A lot more. Yeah, Alex needs a lot more work. Good lord. I mean, <laughs> oh my God! I mean, Still, it looks like a battery is going to go. All right, okay. Jeff. See well, you, coach. Before we let you go, since we got yeah. you, you want your final thought? Yeah, I I just think that uh, I'm hoping that you yeah. guys get your wish, your New Year's wish, and get a new football coach. That's what I hope. Yes, I'm not Take a my- Bears fan, but I I can appreciate that. Hey, listen, I'm a Hallis fan and. All those great players, I love them and admire them. So the Bears mean a lot to me. I'd like to see them win. It, mm-hmm. It's a shame it, it, to be the, in the doghouse all the time. I mean, this is ridiculous. That city has such love. It's like Cleveland. I'm finally get, get, getting a, a chance to win. And, and that's what the Bears deserve. They need that win constantly. Every year they have to win. They might not win a championship, but they they have winning season, go to the playoffs, and they're eventually going to win. That's my feeling. Well, there you go. Yeah, in the words of John Madden, football is always better when the Chicago Bears are winning. And that always stood out to me, the great John Madden. Dad, we're going to see you this next Sunday on X. Sunday or Saturday? Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Saturday, 11, Saturday 11 o'clock. 11 a.m. See, we'll see you, see Coach. You. Okay. Nice meeting you. I have some good too. thoughts. All right, Thank buddy. You. Take God care. Bless. Coach, my dad, Coach Atosha. Gary, I yes, got sir. another guy in the hole. I want your big facts, your big final thoughts. You've come on here. You're getting some fans. Claudio. <laughs> meet every day. You got to play. There you gotta play Cla- hey, Claudio. You got to play Claudio's music for me. <laughs> oh. yeah. That's what I thought you were hitting over there. I was like, man, that's a big, that's a I big uh... <laughs> Maybe Shane the can. Barber, the can barber. I, can I switch that in show, Phil? I think you can. I tried to do it once. Yeah, you can. Oh, I just did it. Hold up, Gary. I got you. Okay. All right. Buckle up, kid. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. There it is. is it? <laughs> it's a classic. A classic. <laughs> without a shout. You have your shout out time, Gary. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you know your patron okay. number? Did Shane give you that? Shane did. I believe it is. And and I can pull it up real quick on my uh, real Facebook quick. Messenger. It is. Give me one second. I just switched to dun, iPhone 12. Dun, 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 and, uh, dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, it's the wrong show. I'm sorry. No, oh, I'm my goodness. <laughs> Did you Shane, find I'm, try- it? I'm trying oh. to find you in my chat, and I can't. you got to know this by heart. Lady Bear's pissed at you right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know hers by heart. <laughs> You know what it is? I have so many messages from um from it's the guys good. in my cigar group 
you're you kind of our group. We got Claudia. Yes. I don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> <laughs> You'll figure it out. Give us your final thoughts. You can always pop back and, and put it into the chat and we'll put it up. What are your, okay. fi- what's okay. your final thoughts? Here I am Patreon member number four oh five. Look at that. Boom, boom. All right. Here's my final thoughts, guys. We need to hire people in the off season who are football people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it's Peyton Manning, if it's Mike Shanahan, the guy who I want, who I think will be perfect to lead this organization back to the promised land of being whether he's the coach or he's the guy making football decisions who's a football lifer and I, and you guys probably see me like put it in the chat a lot right mm-hmm. bill cower okay you like that guy bill, yes yes i think if the bears came to him and said listen bill you're the guy whatever position you want to play in this organization be it you know, the football operations guy or the president, and you bring in smart people under you, you're the guy. Okay, and I think that he would relish that role. But we're dealing with the, you know, <laughs> the rumper room that we call the 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 Hallises and the McCaskies, okay? Mm-hmm. They're not going to get it right. They're going to hire the next hot, you know, up-and-coming offensive guru, and we're going to be singing a sad song four years into it like we are right now with Mad Nagy, okay? And there's hope, guys. There's, there's hope. I hope if there's we hope. got the right people. I hope that is hope. Get- <laughs> That's going to be the quote, the name of this show, Shane. I hope <laughs> there's hope. hope. There's hope. <laughs> I hope there's hope. I hope that there's hope. Okay. A rope of dope. I hope there's hope. Where's my right. <laughs> Kennedy? That'll be our new song. Well, Gary, you came on the show. You were nervous at first. You're meeting with your boys the first time. You've been a huge supporter of what it is we do here. Love you for that. Truly, you know, you've made me smile. <laughs> you've made my nipples hard. Coming on here after, you know, I didn't, I picked the Bears to lose 34 uh, 16. And so I didn't have the belief, but, you know, in the heart of the game, you're a competitor. My juices were flowing. I had an opportunity there to win. I thought you came in here and really brought it home and brought your passion with it. But we got to get to our next guy. So I I really appreciate you. Right, Shane? You appreciate our boy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cigar, yeah, all right, guys. I love it. Right, Thanks, brother. Gary. We'll be on. We're gonna have plenty of shows on the patron side as well as here in the off season. We're gonna bring you back. Yeah, on. real quick. Go ahead. This pick Pythagoras Alley Miranda. I see your game, and I don't give a fuck for your patron. Keep up your bullshit in the chat, bro, because I'll bounce you from fucking both. Oh, Let shit. me control the fucking jokes. So go fuck yourself. Thank all right. You. Up. Yeah, I don't give a fuck if you're a patron or not. You want to be a dickhead in the fuck in the chat room on my show, Gary? Go fuck yourself. What is he being a dick about, Gary? This, oh, a- everything. He's a, a fucking smart ass. Yeah. Yeah, so, we don't need that kind of bullshit yeah. on our network. Take that shit to the other guys. Shane, okay? Shane is holding people up. He's doing what? You got to. <laughs> yeah, fucking jokesters in the chat. I don't give a fuck if he's a patron or not. Don't be a dick in the fucking chat. How about that? I love it. Gary. Keep I it simple. You, I love the cigar, and I love the light with the brick wall behind you. Seriously. <laughs> also, don't care if I'm talking to a veteran, Pythagoras. Don't play the fucking game, Chief. You want to be a dick? I'll treat you like a dick. All right, Gary. All right, guys. God bless you, you too. Love you, too. Got to get your cousin on the patron side. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, brother. Look at this guy. Gary coming in there, bringing heart, passion, shame. Yep. Off the sideline, grabbing Miller by the face mask and throwing him out. Hold on. Pitagoras. Yeah. Shario keeps putting his yeah. <laughs> comments up. It's in the Bronx. Oh, 
shaking, shaking we, Pythagoras. Keep it neck. up, Chief. I don't even know where Tim is from. I don't know if I'm supposed to even give his real name because I see Country Boy. Country Boy. Country Boy 662. We're going to have to learn about that. Is coming on the show. Again, every Bears Hour Live, we try to bring two of you fans, loyal fanatics of our network on the show, and obviously Bears fans. Give us your rant. Give us your thoughts. Give us your passion. we got to have hype. It's 100 Crew Hot Takes. Phil and Shane bringing on a fan to talk Bears and what just happened in the Bears game each and every week. Every week. You have to have hype. Phil's hype, always hype. telling me to hype. You can't be flat. Don't be so be ready. Flat. Be prepared and bring Scary your passion. Man. Hype coming out of my ass. It's 100 Crew Hot Takes. Hashtag Spencer Strong. Those are big time fucking throws. Absolutely. Here. That's post game show on the planet bears hour live Here's what's going on fellas man hey, up, fella? look Country man not too much is that matt Nagy crying in the background at your house I, no nah, that's my <laughs> baby look yeah. she just heard his motherfucking press conference and she it pissed her off too <laughs> just as much as it made me mad i don't know what the hell that was man but the first thing i really want to say is yeah everybody's right matt Nagy need to go like for like and this is before 2019, before 2020. Yep. You got to go for the simple fact, you're like, you had a chance to win a motherfucking game, Chargers. Like, I'm going to go back that far. You could have won the Chargers game and a couple more in that season and been 10-6, and six, but yet you was a dumbass and you chose to not put your motherfucking players in the best position to win. That's right. You didn't come here to do what you were supposed to do, which is develop Mr. Trubisky. And even and I'm glad he's gone. Honestly, I'm glad that man gone so he can go ahead and go on with his career. And I hope he don't pull a Leonard Floyd. That would be my best. Like that would be the best out. Don't pull a Leonard Floyd and be better than you was here, because that would just be a long line, a long oh. list of motherfucking players that did exactly that. I hear what you're saying. You're saying Mitch Trubisky goes somewhere else, and then he starts showing his real talents there. Well, that would be an indictment on the guy that was hired to come here and be the Absolutely. off. Absolutely. And those people, and we started this before Gary came on. Shane was pointing out the Twitter, the Twitter buildup. Listen, I don't want to get into politics, but we know about fucking Twitter. Okay. There's a lot of people that love to be this guy. They like this thing right here, this keyboard, this keyboard yep. motherfucking tough guys, right? You know I'm exactly saying, what you're doing when you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> you know what you're Wait, doing. Wait, did you just call out Pythagoras too, Phil? I don't know if I'm oh. talking about <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Bears blog. People are saying Matt Nagy needs to really have his quarterback. Shane smashed that bullshit. But he picked Foles, though. He exactly. had a chance to exactly. pick any quarterback in the motherfucking draft. Yeah. You moved up the draft, Mitch. You could have moved up the draft the quarterback that you wanted, but you wanted Nick Foles. Yeah, you were willing. You were willing to give a fourth rounder for Nick Foles and gar guarantee him twenty one million. He signed on. the The narrative is so bullshit, Tim, because you as the head coach say the Bears come to me right and say I want you to coach. Well, my first question is obviously, yeah, you know, I'm interested. What's the plan at quarterback? That's that's the thing. You already established that. Like I just came. From, I just came from an organization with Patrick Mahomes, and this guy ain't exactly. that. Exactly. Or you're sitting there and you're saying, "I can. I want to work with that kid because I can unlock all of these things." Let's not fucking manipulate the blog and all of these fucking people that are trying to not recognize what's on the fucking tape every week. With this coach. Because that's what I've been seeing, especially for the last three years, that, oh, Matt Nagy doesn't have his quarterback. He's so limited with Mr. Trubisky, but at the same time, when you think about it, Mr. Trubisky damn near saved his job like a few weeks ago. Go, oh, Tim. Tell Let's him, be Tim. real about it. In Oregon, man. We went from a 16-point offense to a 30-point offense for three weeks, and goddamn Matt Nagy had to put his fucking fingers back in it. Exactly. Why? The if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> like literally for real shit 
I agree. And I'm glad your pops ain't on because I don't like to cuss in front of my elders. You know, Coach O, I love you to death, man. You raised a hell of a man. But still, it is what it is. <laughs> Where are you from, Tim, with the accent? I'm trying to hear. I'm originally from Mississippi, man. Born and raised, Batesville, Mississippi. And father, honestly, that's why I get my passion for football for. My father went to junior college. I wish he was still here. He's like, true story. When he was telling me, I went to junior college in Mississippi. I go, what the hell was that like in the 50s? What college did he go to? Oh, God, I am suck at this. But I will text you and let you know. He said to me, All right. this is the true story. All I, had, right. I had to get out of there. I took the first opportunity to go to Nebraska because <laughs> the way they treated black people down there was overwhelming to him. And I'm not trying hey, to. Hey, that's true. That's true I'm shit, though. 100. It's, it's hard out there. For the first, because he's from Brooklyn, New York. This is a East. They, they were like, you're a Yankee coming down here. So he was treated <laughs> a certain way. And then he told me the story about, and I'll let him tell the story. But first time he's ever seen any human being have to go on the other side of the street because he was walking on this side. And he's like, I can't be here. I just, he didn't feel comfortable. And that's how he raised me to recognize a person. And yeah, honestly, even with that, now, like, mm -hmm. I, I always had a mentality where I could never have grown up at that time just because of how I am. Now, they would kill me. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. I uh, I have never bit my lip or bowed my head to nobody. Let me ask like, you, what did you think of the uh, Javon Wims drop to start this game? I think if Darnell Mooney would have played or if Riley Whitley would have been on a fucking play, that would have been a touchdown. Totally Where agree. Is? There he is. Look at him. Like, let's be real. 1-1, baby. One, one, baby. One, one, baby. What up? What up? <laughs> you know it. You know Mooney ain't dropping that shit. And Red Ridley, Man, too. not at all. This kid, this kid Imagine, Ridley comes in at the end of the game fucking Ridley balling out. Was in the game, guys. Oh, God. For that play. This is coaching now. The blog. I would love. We got Peter Bukowski to come on here. We fucking destroyed that guy. On our network, I saw that, that, and I loved every second of that shit. I would that love was beautiful. The blog, the Bears blog, to come on here and talk fucking football with people that are going to challenge your football acumen and not portray that you have source. A source means shit to me. That's I always get that shit. Like I don't give a shit if someone told you. I share. Someone told me this happened. Okay, that's big. And deal. a lot of stuff. I hate to cut you off, Phil, but a lot of stats that a lot of people want to bring up it, just in last year mm -hmm. is the touchdowns and all this situation. But do people not realize that we were like second or third in drop passes last year? That's true. A lot. It doesn't yeah, get we dropped more passes in this one game than all weekend they of all teams. Damn it! That as an excuse for Matt Nagy's offense. That's what we can't. Like football coaching is accountability, the fundamentals, as you heard my father on here, and you had Steve Edwards. I thought Steve fit right in talking about the offensive line and all of the issues. We have how many guests do we have, Shane? Olin Krutz, Patton Rank, all of these people. Everybody has different opinions. That's fine. Even Pythagoras in there. I love the debates. I love it. When you start being rude, you go over a line. There's a line. You don't go over the fucking line. You don't try that. Swearing is completely legal on this show. It Being really an asshole is not. I'm, not. I'm keeping it 100. So everybody's going to have an opportunity if they deserve to come on the show like you, Tim. You've been a huge supporter of what we do. You promote us. You go out of your way. The show isn't about Tim. He gets that. Tim is a guest on the show. Because he loves it. Gary was nervous because he was coming on with his boys for the first time. Probably afraid of audio. Look at him. He looks like a fucking terrorist. I hate to say it, but I'm in the cave. I'm in the cave here. Yeah, totally. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with it, cardio. <laughs> but hey, on the real. Go with y'all, like I, I've been following y'all since the last network, man. Seriously. Like. Mm -hmm. I love y'all, like you and Shane, man. I'm glad y'all stuck together. Oh yeah, he's but, like, oh. bad boys for life. Bad boys. But for outside life. of that, yeah, man, 
I found you with the tape never lies, period. Like I I was pissed off. I thought I think it was actually the New Orleans game last year. Mm-hmm. And like ever since then I saw that and I've been like I've been loving y'all, but I agree with everything that y'all be saying. Like seriously, y'all do not miss a beat. That's that's what we try to do here. Hundred crew strong. And that's right. right there on perfect time, Chuck and Lydia Goring. It's exactly what we do. I keep it a hundred. I am trying to negotiate people that are imitating what we do and people that are hating and trolls. And then there's people that love what we do and respect. And that's really where we go. I I don't care about somebody's uh, follow or like or any of that. I care about the heart of people. Like you can have a completely different, like uh, I'll say Sonny. Parish, one of our patrons, he has a completely different point of view, but I'm not going to bed or worrying about Sonny. I, I don't like him. He just has a different perspective, feeling on it. Hopefully this show has done what I said. How many people have come to me? Holy fuck. I thought this way about Khalil Mack, and you showed me on the tape that it isn't that. It's the other way, where the narrative is Mack is getting paid so much money. He should be having a sack, even the Leonard Floyd bullshit. Let me say this. Leonard that Floyd, was my Le- – Go Floyd, ahead. Go ahead. Leonard Floyd has the best defensive fucking player in the league inside. What that does for a pass rusher, think about it in your head. On the outside. It fucking opens up you for a fucking free run because that inside guy is pushing that like quarterback. Like you got to make one move and go. You good. One move and go. One, they're not double teaming Leonard. So Leonard's speed and twist game and all of that, all the occupant, that's what happened. And that's why Gary's point tonight about Mac, again, moving him around, getting those matchups is going to help the whole fucking team. But Pagano, Nagy, the conservativeness of Shane, you said this a while ago during the season. There's something they can't be aggressive because they're worried about their offense not exactly. being in yeah, that's. Game. I was actually defending Pagano a little bit earlier, but I mean, as the season went on, Phil, it's. Oof, he, he he's got to, he's got to be. I like I said, I don't want to bring everybody down. I expect them to bring Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy back. I think that they're going to move on from Mitch. I think Chuck Pagano is going to. I think that they're going to move on from Chuck Pagano. But do you really want them to fuck up another young quarterback? Really? No, no, no. That's 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 the thing, and they're gonna they'll. I'm not saying that that's what I want. I'm saying that's what I think this ownership that's what's will happen. do. Yeah. Let me, let me t- 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 jump in here. You know what Shane wanted? I'm going to give my boy a shout out because it's true. Yeah. He wanted a kid playing in Philly that got benched in that game and then total chaos of betting and gambling. You know what I'm talking about? Former mm-hmm. Alabama Jalen Hurts. That went to mm-hmm. Oklahoma. And they got drafted. And I would take Jalen Hurts. What would Jalen? I would have anyway. Exactly. That's how nice? Would. How nice would that be to have a, a, a developmental guy like that that's got athleticism that can get you out of trouble when he needs to with his legs? Jalen Hurts. But the Bears, the Bears wouldn't draft one at all. But at the same time, you got to think about it. Jalen Hurts is damn near another Mr. Biscuit. He's not completely accurate. No, nope. but he can make those plays when they need to be made. Absolutely, no bullets in the pocket. There's, there's lies. He's Ready? got a better. He's got a better deep ball than Mitch. He does. He's yeah, true more enough. accurate. True yep. And he's a young kid. But he also got receivers that catch the fucking ball. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> for real. But I think I think Mitch has better receivers here. Let me say this: in Chicago, than they do in Philly. Until they started playing. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, true. Not but Phil, we got we got some. Some Breaking stuff in? here in the in the chat room, and our nope. guest here, Country Boy, he he's looking like somebody that's connected to the Bears. And what do you guys think? Take a look at this picture. Let me see. He's got some Spice Adams going on, Man, right? Oh my god! Look at it. Hey, see? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like this hey. motherfucker, Spice Adams. Hey, it's better than Cedric Benson. I yeah, say that, that's right. I'm from Mississippi, but. God, he don't like me no more, so he moved me to Packertown for some odd reason. Yeah. So I, I'm out here completely always debating with with these people about the Bears and 
yeah, we actually got a good team, but we don't have a coach there to do shit with them. Yeah, it's true. You know what bothers me? And I was going to say one last point about Jalen Hurts. <laughs> the lie <laughs> we've gotten from the GM should not be forgotten here on the last you know, game of the season. The lies. I'm going to dra- – it's important to draft a quarterback every year. Never has he done it. He's got no developmental quarterbacks. He's got – what's his name? In the – Taylor – what's his name? Taylor Swift on the practice squad. Oh. Um, <laughs> Why am Jesus. I drawing a blank on this clown? Yeah. What's Jesus our Tyler Bray. Tyler, Tyler Bray. Tyler Bray. Tyler Bray, yeah. Jesus, I don't he know knows the he, offense, though, Phil. I, Been in league seven he years. He really do. Tyler yeah. Bray, guys. I ain't and, seen a damn lick of real playing time, but he know the <laughs> offense. And you got Nick Foles that you traded for. You've developed nobody. You've Which is a nothing. Super Bowl MVP. Exactly. Super Bowl and, MVP is exactly what everybody's been telling me. He's so much well, better than our other quarterbacks. Straight, but six straight with six straight. Yes. And listen, I give him the one against Atlanta, and I give him his two wins. But outside of that, you've done nothing. That's right. 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 That's well, if 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 Pace is the the GM, bringing him back, I I think if they go quarterback in the draft, I think it's one hundred percent not Pace's call. It's going to be the exact quarterback that Matt Nagy wants. You can take that for what it's worth, but that's that's exactly what I think will happen. That sounds that actually sounds like it'll happen. Hub Arkish says it's a bad football decision to fire the coaching staff. <laughs> Guy clearly, no. this guy when clearly, the coaching staff ain't showed you nothing better than eight and eight. Let me read the Bears blog tweet that Ryan Cox is keeping me posted on. My God, I'm so sick of play calling getting blamed for bad execution. Yeah. Well, guess what? Execution is the formulation of the play, you jackass. So the, if you and did we not have not coaching it right? That's the problem. Oh my God. And, did we not have one of our receivers say something like, I wish we co- call one of the plays that we run in practice in a game? Several receivers. Yeah, Anthony Miller said Anthony that. Miller yeah. said you had Riley Ridley get benched before saying that. Let me say this. You had Roquan Smith questioning the defensive coordinator. You got Mitch Trubisky questioning the head coach. That is bad coaching, Hub. God, are we fucking? Well, that's the thing. I hear, I hear media analysts. I've, I've heard it brought up numerous times. People are like, "Oh, he won Coach of the Year in 2018." What is well, that? What, what, this is 2021 yeah, at this point. Yo. Yeah, who, it doesn't it doesn't matter? Here, doesn't uh, matter. Fisher won, and they really don't matter, especially in in 2019 when you go eight and eight. Yeah, twice. Yeah, you're you're in neutral. Back to back. You're in neutral. Exactly. You're in neutral. Who's about Adam Gase was a fucking offensive coordinator of the year. Does that mean he's a bad, a fucking great coach? Hell no. no. Exactly. So you gotta, you can't go for the narratives. That's why it's so important that you follow the link right there on the bottom of the screen. www.thetapeneverlies.com. You're going to get all the shows, defense, offensive breakdowns, coaching clinics, free agency, the NFL draft covered like nobody else. In fact, obviously, keeping it 100, you're going to be seeing that. Special shows throughout the offseason, all throughout. I know some people are sick to their stomachs over the Chicago Bears. But, Tim, does anybody you, – you see what's going on with Tim here, and he's getting his balls broken by Shane. Man. <laughs> with hey, that. You wouldn't want it any other way, would you? Fun, right? I love it. Exactly. I love it. We're going to have parody songs. We're going to do all this stuff. We got my boy Cool Kennedy. He wrote a song ending the show. Remix the Bears Hour Live to end the show. 
We got all of this fun stuff. We're planning and breaking it down. If there's a firing tomorrow, hopefully, because please, I, I heard. Don't don't listen to this that he's safe from a reliable source. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. This was another embarrassment. Well, JJ Stankovic said on a tweet, Phil, and I think it, I think it's important. You know, Ed, I didn't Virginia see it. Virginia turned ninety eight years old. George is a fan. He wears his emotions on his sleeve when it comes to this team. The Bears have been on national TV he a this fan year. Of who? What's that? He a fan of who? Oh, I think he he gets. He gets very emotional. I just don't think he makes the right decisions. I think that's the problem. Like a lot of fans, like a lot. I mean, we have people out here calling for Mike Singletary to restore the roar in Chicago and stuff like that. I'm just saying, I think that he's an emotional guy. And I, to JJ's point, the Bears played on national TV five times. They were embarrassed four times. Every and time. it matters. This is I a like play. How Brad Biggs worded his question. You've, yeah. you've lost eight of 11. Yeah. That's the anti-blog question. That's absolutely. How you, that's exactly what a, a tough question should be. You think Rex Ryan wasn't getting tough questions in fucking New York? What? Yeah. Because they kept it real. They knew. Yeah. They know how important the fucking football team is. New York. And the real New- fucked up thing about the eight and eleven is you could have won at least five of those eleven if you would have oh just made God. a better decision. You imagine the Detroit game was a showcase for anybody defending a coach. That he was the problem. You had a 10 point lead with two minutes and 38 seconds, and you lost. What a badass running back. Exactly. He can't figure out who the fucking running back is for eight weeks. He traded Jordan Howard out of town. Think of Because he, he didn't fit in the system. Tariq Cohen was an every down thought. Tariq Cohen and Cordero Patterson, two special yeah. teamers situational guys are his focus that's a head coach no no and that should that 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 alone should get you out of the motherfucking position exactly but you know we're gonna see i'm not saying he's staying i'm i'm hope what was this title i got hope for hope i got hope for hope tonight that they will make the right decision like we did for having you and gary on that's my reality. I don't know. Hey, you. I appreciate you having me on. Now I know you. That's what I love about this network. Yeah. I've talked to you through text. But when you get to know somebody, I know you got kids screaming in the background. I'm right there with you. Trust me. You Actually, twins. it's only one now. The bigger one that you hear is my wife. Oh, she's <laughs> <laughs> She must be a Steelers fan. They're getting their asses kicked. <laughs> no, actually, she a Cowboys fan, but I'm trying to get her over this way. Yeah, uh, it's hard. It's a... <laughs> I ain't no Bears fan. I can hear her saying it. <laughs> Just show her this picture. Maybe it'll maybe it'll turn the tides. <laughs> I would not do no such thing, man. Wow. <laughs> show her your appearance on this show. Listen, do you have any final thoughts before we let you go? I want to give you the stage as well. As a shout out, like our boy Gary, you were great tonight. Well, I'll end talking about you, but go ahead. All right. So my final thoughts is Pace, Nagy, they need to go. Mm-hmm. I don't care about Nagy. His record, any of that, his record didn't produce shit. Yeah. So just so that what we have in the future is not going to be wasted because all this coach has shown us is that he just don't waste time. From Mr. Trubisky to Riley Ridley, mm-hmm. you ain't did nothing but wasting. And honestly, I ain't got no shout outs because, like I said, like my wife, a lot of my family Bears fans, I mean, Cowboys fans, so they ain't <laughs> even watching, so I can't say shit to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kept it 100. Honestly, I love your personality, your attitude to this, and your belief in what we do at this network, everything we're doing here. Uh, and 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 supporting us and coming with us after we built this new network and being a patron and everything that we love, you know, you love about. Hey, I was happy y'all did it. Yes. Keep it up, man. Keep up the good work. I was happy y'all made your own stuff. Well, yeah. so are we. We Turns got a out- lot more in store for you guys too this off season. Yeah, we- it's gonna be a 
you're not going to be lacking on shows. And I don't know if it, are you into the NFL draft and the entire off season? I'm oh, assuming you oh, are. Oh hell yeah! We're gonna Everything, have it all. And I'm riding with y'all till the wheels fall off. Yep, we're gonna have it all covered for you guys. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, as much as I hate seeing the Bears being bounced from the uh, from the playoffs and the season is so far away now. It's uh, we're not done here at TTNL because Phil and I, we know how to do it. We've been doing this a long, long time, and we have a lot of exciting stuff in store for you guys. So it's gonna, it's gonna be fun, man. Looking forward to it. Uh, hey, I'll be waiting for it, and for everybody in the Hunter Crew, bad out, man. We got greater days ahead, man. Just hope and believe, man. Really. That's right. Well, you kept it real here on the best post game show on the planet, Bears Hour Live. You know that. Thank you so much for jumping on with us. What is it again? Country Boy 662. AKA. Yep, you know, or if you find me on Facebook, it's just Tim Madison, you know. I was I didn't want to give your full government unless you gave me permission. But you got I ain't got it. no problem with it. Follow him, Tim Madison. Great dude, huge Bears fan, huge supporter of our network. I appreciate you, brother, coming on. All right, man. Y'all have a good one, man. See you, man. Right. Give me something. Yep. Give me some goodbye from the South. Something Southern. What do you I got? just did it. It's <laughs> just that simple. Y'all have a good one, man. Y'all be good out here. Everybody <laughs> else as well. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. God bless Tim Madison coming on Bears Hour Live. Uh, Jamal, I was going to answer you. Fourth round, Riley Ridley was the beacon of light. The- Shane. Ryan Pace's words. Ryan. I was a big, a big fan, man. I, I, oh, I'm still I, a fan. <laughs> I co-signed on that. He's, he's got two everything plays. you want. He's not a – what's that? The two plays he got. He's yeah. making plays. I get it. It's a garbage time. But that's the reality of this kid. I, I just don't get it. Yeah. But I love Tim Madison. And I loved Gary. Two fired-up patrons. I, I just love it, man. I love where we're going. Uh, that left me in good spirits because of fans like that. Uh, real quick, uh, I want to say this. Claudio and his family had a huge, tough week, couple weeks. And the video, Claudio, that you put up and the fans reaching out to the network, especially you, my boy, and your family. It was just awesome what we're building here. And I know yeah. you wanted to say something, and you should. You deserve oh. the stage because you were like, to me, and I'll just quote you, and then I'll give it to you. It's what we call this in the business, the pass and trade. <laughs> um, it's amazing how many fans truly care about this network and what we're doing, and you were so surprised how many actually love and respect you despite how Shane treats you on the show. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so go ahead. I, I know you. I wanted to give you two minutes to say yeah, your. Yeah, real quick. I don't. You know, I don't talk like Phil. You know, I keep it short and sweet. But listen, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I had a, like I don't post a lot of stuff. I'm. I don't do a lot of social media. But I, I was like, I looked at my daughter, and I'm like, all these people that have been contacting me that I don't even know, never met. You know, because of this show. They contacted me to say, you know, well wishes for me and my daughter. And she had a procedure. Um, you know, it's kind of crazy to explain, but uh, they actually had to take a piece of her bottom of her skull off because it was putting pressure on her uh, nerves mm. near her spine and stuff like that. So, but anyway, so I looked at my daughter. I'm like, we got to make a little video to say thank you. And, and, I, you know, I got emotional the first like three times I, I made it. I had to make <laughs> it was like the fourth take. Because it was, you know, it was crazy, man. You know, it was just, it was. You want me to air it? I just uploaded it, Claude. You want me to air it? Oh, you can air it. Yeah, you can air it. Go ahead. Yeah. You want to take the, take the uh, comment down, Phil, and I'll play it. You were joking. I got. No, no, no. In case people haven't seen it, they might want to see it. Yeah. What's up, guys? Just want to say thank you for all the thoughts and prayers for me and my daughter Adriana, and just had the best birthday gift ever, having my daughter back home and healthy. So there's just one more thing to do. Bear down. Nice. Yeah. Thank God she looks like mom. Oh, you know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> all my girls, all my girls are beautiful and and uh yeah, it's it's uh, it's amazing. Or so, girls. 
guy. You can't get a guy. You can't get a boy. No, I couldn't. I, I tried wearing work boots. I tried fucking, you know, uh, <laughs> tried all the, all the fucking little fucking tricks of the trade and just didn't work. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, I yeah. got to wait for a grandson, I guess. That was awesome. Now you got oh. my two sons who love Claudio to death. Yeah, they're awesome. Boiling them. He had, today he bought Cool Ranch Doritos. He knew the way to Oh go. man, my kid I kill for those. Riley's <laughs> favorite too. I don't come I don't come here on Sundays to watch the game with Phil. I come here just to wrangle his kids away from him. So yeah. he can focus <laughs> so he can focus on tweeting and fucking Facebook. It's Facebooking. <laughs> Facebook, that's right. Not tweeting. No tweeting. A verb. <laughs> Facebooking at them, well, so I mean, two years ago, Claude. <laughs> I gotta catch up. I gotta catch up with the time. I made Tate cry today. Oh, I felt bad because he like my dog is sensitive about her stomach, so he always will jump and lay on her <laughs> and stuff. And I go, stay away from her. And he's like laying and jumps near, her and the game's on. And I just was angry about the Javon Wims drop and everything. <laughs> Get away from the goddamn ball and get out. <laughs> he went, <laughs> ran into his room. I think Steph came out. Can you talk to him? Anyway, Claudio. Yeah. He, yeah. Anyway, Listen. Claudio, awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah. Vulnerability, I always say, surround yourself with good people and yeah. you're going to get something good. And, and you saw Gary and Tim and why. All of you fans, I can't thank you enough for tuning into the show after a playoff loss, uh, demoralizing defeat, and then you get to see some vulnerability and family stuff that this network is all about. And Claudio, for you to share that, as well as Shane to put the music behind it and everything yeah, like that. that. that it's just nice. really great stuff. I know a lot of you are fighting in the fucking chat and you're going back and forth. Yeah. And let's I was trying to bring up Peter uh, Aris, whatever his name is, because he tried to apologize a little bit to you, Shane. And he, oh, I get it. Listen, I get it. Bring him Phil, on Phil and I are our own worst enemy sometimes. Yeah. I think people see they they they, they want to live and breathe. Listen, I'm not going to hold it well, against he, the Well, guy. he actually asked you. He actually is like, oh, should I stay a patron? He was asking you guys. Well, oh, if you don't I want to, it's then like, don't, yeah, dude. Like, dude. It, <laughs> if you want to leave, then leave. Take but I'm just saying. Home, yeah. Kid. Don't if you're going to be a dick in the You're chat room, I'm going to call you out. I was talking to – I texted Phil about it. I am I was surprised when I looked up and I saw that he was a patron. I'm like, F what are you doing? What are you doing? Sit back and enjoy the fucking show. If you want to be a dick, be a dick. But if you get called out for it, for being a dick, don't be a little bitch and then try to play a sympathy card like you did. We can still be good. It's fine. I mean, whatever. It is what it is. But – Phil and I can be our own worst enemies because we, the keep it at 100 mantra, and I think we've dealt with it on Twitter. Every one of the YouTube shows that we put out, there's, hey, guys, love you guys for years, loved you forever, but I got to keep it 100. Do your intros have to be three minutes and 48 seconds long? Yes. Well, do. yeah, they do, actually. They have to be creative because actually, what do yeah. you want? A redundant fucking... All right, we're starting. We're different. Show. We're not the same. We're not the same not cookie different. cutter show as everybody else. That's what separates us. That we're different, and we'll tell you. If, listen, hit the fast forward button. Isn't a new fucking invention. If yeah. you don't like it, click it. If you don't like, you really don't like it, click it twice. It'll take you ahead twice as fast. Pretty cool. But Phil and I are going to call it as we see it, and we're not for everybody, and that's fine. I don't give a shit if. Yeah. I think after I a whoever year, doesn't after a year that the Bears had that game, people are people's Everyone's emotions. Everybody's, coach. yeah, you know, it's like it sucks, it's but we got that. that was great. Listen, we yeah. love Pythagoras, R Ricardo, Ricky. Exactly, dude. I'm not. Guys, holding... if you haven't caught the rant. It'll, Shane is going to put this show. It'll be on the YouTube channel. You can We're watch. Almost it. out of jail. We're almost out of jail. February thirteenth. Hopefully. Set. That, Hopefully, is that Valentine's Day or is it the fourteenth? You got oh, Jesus. I'm uh -oh. just poor I'm just stuff. Sure. Well, I catch up during that time. It's like only eight hundred commercials. I always forget the date. Just don't ask her when <laughs> Valentine's I'm Day. I'm asking you and the world, <laughs> all of you. Anyway, there's jerks and there's family and there's jerks in your family. So you have to deal and learn to deal. And I honestly love 
our big giant family that we're growing and fans. If you haven't decided to become a patron, become a patron. Go to the tapeneverlies.com, become a patron for seven dollars a month. You're gonna get a lot. And as we go into the off season, there's gonna be more, and we're gonna start some tiers and things like that. So get in while the getting is good, as Claudio's father would say. And uh that's all of, I got to say. Put on some work boots. Let's get on. Exactly. A hard hat. Claudio, Someone thanks. in the chat said, I should have wore a hard hat instead of a Jimmy hat. Yeah. Well, there was no Jimmy hat. That's the whole point. <laughs> That's the whole point. Claudio, thanks for coming on and, and sharing that. Oh, yeah, at the end of course. Of the show. Great uh, show. Shane, I'm going to give you your chance for final thoughts, and I'll end with mine, and then we'll bounce for the night. Yeah, no, it's – hey. The off season is here. It's uh, it was an especially long one last year, Phil. Uh, oh, yeah. It was very very eventful for you and I. But um, we're doing our own thing now, and I, I couldn't be happier of the not the Chicago Bears season, but the season that that you and I and everybody behind the scenes, Chris Sandlin, Heather Sandlin, yes. Jeremy Plashinsky, the voice of TTNL everybody cars claudio everybody that's helped us ace in the swag shop uh, they, they've they're the unsung heroes of what we do here phil and i get to be on here you guys see us each and every week every show um we get a lot of the <laughs> we get a lot of the love we do get a lot of the hate too but we couldn't do what we do each and every week without the people that aren't seen behind the scenes but uh i just want you guys to know once this is tentatively the last bhl for the season maybe you might see it pop up in the playoffs on a on a big game we're not going to commit to anything but just keep your keep your eyes peeled you may see us back but tentatively this is going to be the last bhl um of the year for us of the season because bears season is obviously over but as we move forward uh we're going to totally change our focus to off-season analysis we're going to breeze through what we've seen uh what needs to change once we know what direction this team is going uh senior bowl is going to be coming up uh the nfl combine right now tentatively is still up in the air they don't really know what's going on with that there's a lot of questions surrounding that with uh the pandemic with covid and whatnot, but uh, there's still going to be an NFL offseason when it comes to that. Uh, workouts leading up to the draft, NFL free agency. Phil and I are going to have it covered head to toe. Cars is going to be another guy that's going to be very influential on what we do in terms of our offseason coverage because us three live for it. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we enjoy it, and even if you guys are semi-interested in the draft or in the NFL offseason in terms of free agency... We're going to take you guys through it. You guys are going to know the players. You're going to know the targets. We put our necks out there, Phil. Where we came from, we used to do it all the time. I mean, there was there was an off season where we made a list. We hit on a whole bunch of them. There's been off seasons where we where we miss on them, and that's that's just the name of the game. But we put our names to it. Uh, we hope that you guys are here with us. There's going to be a lot of shows that are going to be patron only, and we understand we're still. In a pandemic, people don't have the funds, but still, if you can swing it, you see at the bottom of the screen there, head over to thetapeneverlies.com. It's going to be $7 a month. That's going to give you full access to each and every show, behind the scenes, pop-up shows, NFL draft shows, free agency shows, anything we do, you will have full access. That works out to about... 22 and a half cents, 23 cents a day for what we do. I mean, we're over two hours here just on BHL. You guys yes. are familiar with keeping it 100. That thing goes three, four, sometimes five hours. So for 23 cents a day, we feel like it's well worth it. We wanted to keep the price point low for everybody because we understand the times and the environment that we are living in. And let's face it, dollars are hard to come by. We, we, totally totally understand and 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 get it we want you guys to be there with us so that's why we we dropped it as as low as we could on our end to the seven dollar price point 
And please just head over there and nothing says that you have to stay for multiple months. Try it out for a month. And if you don't like it, you're out seven bucks. But I think everybody that is a patron will open their arms and welcome you guys and, and tell you how it how much it is worth the investment on your part. And like I said, if, if you want to learn about the offseason, we're going to have you guys covered from from top to bottom on every move that this team makes, every move that we think that they should make. And uh, we're going to do it all. Exactly. Hopefully tailgate party next year. Perfect timing, Brennan. Brennan Wesley keeping it 100 right there. Reading my mind. Uh, also, just real quick uh, on the business side of things. You know, we keep it 100, but we do it with the formulation of football truths behind us, as well as trying to be who we are creatively, those opens, the parody songs, the original music that you're going to hear to end this show by Cool Kennedy, who's now on the roster too. Lawrence Fleming, the voice, I want to thank him too. And, you know, there's so many, Jeremy Plashinsky, the bouncer, all of you guys that Shane mentioned, can't thank you enough. You 100 crew as well. We th we're going to do it with whoever. <laughs> whoever signs up, whoever. We're, we're going to be here. I see a lot of people. We're going to miss you. We'll see you in the spring. No, we ain't. we'll be back next week. We got Paige DeMacos from the Draft Network. We'll already start. We'll talk. She's a huge Bears fan, has a great football acumen. And IQ. We don't we don't shut it down here in the offseason. We don't we, shut it we down. We ramp it up. We're here every week. We're gonna be keeping it hundred. Shane's talking about Bears Hour Live. We might change the show name and cover the playoffs. We don't know yet. We're still always thinking outside the box. But I know in the box, we're keeping it hundred with you. X is with the O's will be on Saturday. Obviously, the full version of the tape never lies will be for you patrons. Wednesday or Thursday, depending on everything I have with my family to get all of that cut, produced, edited, narrated. It's a lot of work to put that. And then I have to cut it again and put it out on our channel for the people that aren't patrons. So I try to work that way there. So those are the business sides. Obviously, um, this show will become a podcast. If you're listening on the podcast, you don't see a lot of the things that are going on. With the fighting, we have the clip of Anthony Miller and everything like that. So hopefully you do go to the YouTube channel. Shane will upload that immediately. And once we're back on our network, YouTube live page, that's going to be great. Um, and that's really it. I want to thank my dad for the season and jumping on when the games are nationally televised. Claudio for producing and always being there. And my wife, obviously, and family. And you guys are family. I truly believe that. You never bother me. You don't bother me with your questions. I see. I hate to bother you. You don't bother me. You don't. Just get that out of the way. I, I try to I answer everyone. My final thoughts, though, are about this football team. And I hope tomorrow we're going live again to talk about the firing and the moving on and changing, or as Greg would say, course correcting what this football team is right now. My final thoughts on this game is this game of football is won and lost in the trenches. Today, the offensive line couldn't play the physical game that needed to be played against the Saints. So how do you do that? You use angles to help your football team be in a game and run the fo football. And unfortunately, Matt Nagy couldn't scheme and keep this team in the game that you were in. The defense played with passion. You heard my father. You heard Shane. You heard Claudio. You heard Gary. And you heard Tim all on here. And I see you guys in the chat seeing the defense. It's seven to three. The biggest indictment, it's my final thought, is when the coach told you in the press conference on the question from J.J. Stankovitz, our buddy, why, with a minute and 22, did you run the ball there? And his answer is the reason why you fire this guy. Because you're an 8-8 eight and eight football team that backed into the playoffs by losing to your rival, 
Let's keep it 100. And you're in this game, 7-3. to three, And you stopped Drew Brees. Your defense did their job. And they got you, the offensive guru, the ball back. And you chose to run the ball and go into the half because you didn't like the field position there. It was the 25-yard line. <laughs> that's where you start. And that's where you should be finished with those statements. So that is my final thought. You want to answer that real quick for Chuck and Lydia? Will there there still be patron content monthly leading? Oh, my (laughs) God. That's going to be 95%. Yeah, it's going to be 95% of it, and it's going to be multiple times weekly. We're going to do live mock drafts and so much stuff that I don't want to give away because – you know, there's people that like to copy what we do. So yeah, we'll have some 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 patron mock drafts. We'll patron come out. You guys can you guys can bring patron shows only with just you patrons. It's gonna be officially time this time, not five hours. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this was the last show, so we went over our two hour mark, but I think it was worth it. Oh it yeah, because you guys brought it. It is the last game and. There's 300 and something of you still strong going. And I just want to thank you all. And keeping it 100, Wednesday night, Paige Demacolis from the Draft Network. Like I was saying, we're going to talk about this past game, the playoff game, but we're going to talk about the draft. And hopefully there's a firing tomorrow. If there is, I promise you, Shane and I will be live, breaking it down like nobody else can with actual football knowledge and acumen. God bless you. It's unfortunate. Eight and nine bears, Shane. You lost eight out of your last 11, Coach. Brad Biggs actually stepped up that time. Took him all season to to have a good question. (laughs) Took him all year to have a good statement of truth. Rhetorical. All right, guys. Good night. Right after Bears games with your boys Draft Doc and the smartest man alive. Man alive. Bears are alive. Bears are alive. We go on live right after Bears games with yeah. your boys Draft Doc and uh, the smartest man alive. Man Chicago alive. Bear coverage looking like the 3 4. Study film analysis you never seen before. They bring it to you live. Passion and stats. Broke one Smith 52 Khalil Mack. QB sacks. Nagy need a new plan. His offense sucks. He should stick to selling shoes, man. Hope the defense can hold us down. Maybe if he could roll out money, Mish could throw a touchdown. If the coach keeps calling dumb plays, the fans want him out. Gotta be Green Bay. Apply pressure on Rodgers, fight each play. Tell Claudio to chill and smoke weed every day. Dissect the game plan with Shane Marshall. Nagy gotta check the tape, but won't tell us what he saw. And draft Dr. Phil Blue with views with the Rams. Coach Atosha said you gotta him. play with love and respect. Like, there's our life. There's our life. We go on live right after Bears games with your boys Draft Doc and the smartest man alive. There's our life. There's our life. We go on live right after Bears games with your boys Draft Doc and the smartest man alive.